What is up crew, it's your boy KSM, and on today's stream we're going to be talking about how to draw your characters in perspective, and I'll be showing you how to lay out your perspective grids, we'll talk a little bit about the basic structures and forms, and of course, we'll throw in a little bit of foreshortening, the forbidden F word that a lot of you artists might be scared of. Today's stream is going to be really fun, I hope you guys enjoy this full process uh, full process drawing that we're going to be doing, and if it's your first time here, my name is KSM, I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, to character design and I also currently work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania so if you are interested in some free art education or my dog who is sleeping over there make sure to follow subscribe on YouTube all of that stuff and I hope you guys enjoy today's stream <sighs> there you go easy man I'm getting good with these ad lib YouTube intros we're getting we're getting pretty solid on these but all right so as the intro um, as the intro explained guys Today we're going to be talking about a few character design stuff. Um, we're shifting away from the structure of the head and just, just for a little bit today because I wanted to kind of mix it up. I was getting a little tired of drawing heads, I'm not going to lie. So I was like, let's go do something completely different or let's go draw full body characters, but not just draw full body characters. Let's go draw full body characters in perspective. Now, I already started doing a little bit of the rough drawing um, earlier uh, before, the, before the stream started, but I'll be going over all the fundamentals here uh, for this character, which which we'll be drawing as well. So yeah, uh, these were some drawings that I've done in the past with you guys, just showing you some of how I approach drawing figures in perspective. And we'll be doing the same thing here, okay? So let me actually walk over, uh, let me go and walk over some of the things that we've done here today. So that way you guys are not like super lost of what's going on. And also, oh, if you guys, if you guys, uh, what's it called? If you guys are new here and don't know where to grab these resources, if you go to my Discord channel over here, you'll actually be able to grab today's worksheet. So if you want to work along, practice, struggle a little bit with foreshortening. These are hard poses, by the way. The The first one is like a medium level uh, difficulty because you're interacting with two characters. But the second one that we're working on, that's going to be... <sighs> That's going to be a doozy, and I hope we can get to it today. I have a feeling we'll get to it today. Um, but here are two resource sheets as well. This is the Fundamentals of Form sheet that I'll be later making into a digital art book that you guys can download. So here's that one. And I'm also giving you guys a compilation of Andrew Loomis's book on perspective. It's a great resource to grab, but I will tell you guys, make sure you click open in browser so you get the 4K resolution. Don't just right click. Uh, don't just click on this and then right click save because you'll get a lower resolution image. You want to make sure to grab the 4K, especially for something like this, where there's so many uh, like small font details. Make sure you're doing that, all right? Uh, but with that being said, welcome in. Everyone coming in here. Thank you for all the subs. Thank you for all the follows earlier. Appreciate that. Let's, let's get started, I guess. All right. So one of the first things I want to call out here is when it comes down to drawing characters in perspective, Oftentimes, I see a lot of people get fixated on this idea of KSM, uh, how should I learn the one point perspective, two point perspective, three point, four point fisheye lens, five point perspective, blah, blah, blah. And they're all so fixated on these numbers and trying to get all these crazy things. When in reality, the first thing and arguably the most important thing about perspective is this this letter right here. HL. All right. And I'm not talking about hot ladies. I'm talking about the horizon line. All right. So what, what is the horizon line exactly? The horizon line basically is the eye level. Okay. So whatever the viewer's camera, the viewer's eye level is, that is going to be where the horizon line is. And the horizon line is going to dictate whether or not you are seeing something above or below the horizon line. All right. So you could imagine if there was a box above the horizon line, what you would be seeing is the upper portion on top of that box, right? So knowing how this horizon line works is going to be really valuable, but there's actually a lot more that you can even do with just understanding the horizon line. And I'll explain that really quick uh, with you guys before we jump into today's drawing, because I think this will be really interesting, especially for those of you who maybe haven't done perspective before. And out of curiosity, in the chat, how many of you guys in the chat maybe struggle with either perspective or, or drawing characters in perspective or struggling with foreshortening? Put an F in the chat. I'm kind of curious to see because if you guys are telling me, Kaysom, I don't really struggle with these things right now. If I find that no one struggles with that, then I probably won't go too in depth today. But if I'm finding a lot of you guys are like, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little rough around the edges when it comes to this category. 
then I would definitely, I'll definitely kind of talk a little bit more in depth. All right. Uh, but yeah, as you guys can see, see YouTube, YouTube doesn't see all this, but you guys live right now. You guys see all the, all the F's in the chat. That's a lot of F's. Damn, it keeps going too. Um, in that case, I'll talk a little bit about the perspective a bit more. Uh, we'll get really nice in depth into it. Uh, so that way you guys can get a full, um, have that full breakdown there. All right. So let's talk, let's talk about the basics first. So the horizon line, as I've explained, is kind of that eye level. But here's some cool things that you can do with the horizon line. Let's say, for example, you want to place a, uh, let's just put a box in perspective. Okay, so we'll just do a one point perspective. And, and what one point perspective basically means is that all the lines um, that are going to be, I believe, perpendicular to the horizon line are going to be um, following and converging to a single point. So here we've got this point right here. Let's just draw out a box and I'm going to draw a simple box here using kind of this horizon line. We're not going to be adding any more three point perspective, anything like that. I just want to show you guys kind of actually let's, let's not even do a box. Let's just do a a um, a kind of square, right? So let's just take a piece of paper and let's put that in perspective here. So you could imagine there's a floating piece of paper here. And then if we did that going down, you got another like floating piece of paper right here, right? So there you go, floating pieces of paper, easy peasy. And you can easily take these floating pieces of paper, bring them down, and you can imagine now they're a box, okay? So we have all of that there, right? So we got a box, all of that. Now what's really cool about the horizon line, other than just you being able to plot points here, in perspective is that the horizon line actually also dictates how much further something away is from a person. So here's an example, okay? So obviously, horizontally, you can put stuff further and further away from the center of your image, and that'll kind of skew the image more. So if you put like a box here, that'll kind of move it further away. Um, but even vertically as well, the horizon line, I think this is where you can see the most power of the horizon line. So let's just say I take kind of this uh, horizontal line here. So if I were to place, if I were to place this, um, this square, this piece of paper in perspective, but instead of it going further away from us, it's just going to be higher up, right? You're going to notice that what's going to actually happen is the the thickness of the paper or the width or the sorry the the length of the paper is going to be the same right so we're just bringing it up here but notice how as you get higher and higher um you're going to be seeing more of the uh what's it called more of the paper here more of the degree of the paper i should say so this is, there's going to be a term here called the degree which is basically how much that paper is going to be kind of tilting in also i guess you'll be seeing less of the degree sorry not more so notice how as it gets higher and higher to match that same kind of thickness and length of that paper, this area right here is actually going to, uh, I think it should say, yeah, it'll be, it'll be going further and further up there as you're going to kind of seeing less and, uh, or sorry, more of it actually, it should be more of it this way. There you go. So you'll be seeing more of it as it opens up like that. So as the, as this something gets higher, it'll open up more. As it gets lower below the horizon line, you'll also be seeing more of the top line, right? So you might be wondering, okay, Sam, okay, why is that important? Well, this is important because this will actually let you be able to not only give dimensionality and form in the horizontal space, but also vertically as you work your way up top here. Now, there's one more thing I want to give you guys as a little bit of a baseline when it comes to uh, drawing drawing and understanding perspective because here's a cool little cool little trick here that you guys can use okay i'm gonna show you guys really quick how to rotate forms in perspective as a quick little demo and hopefully this will be uh, helpful to you guys as well so let me move this one here so here's how we're going to go and do this okay so if you take this uh, little box that we drew right here and we, we just used a, a rough one point perspective and stuff and what i'm going to do right now is i'm actually going to just draw an ellipse kind of trying to hit all four corners of this box here and let me do it on a new layer so that way i can kind of move it around okay so let me just kind of go like this i want to move that down and so my goal here is just to make an ellipse, put all four corners, right? Boom, boom, boom. And now let's say, you know, like, okay, Sam, I kind of want to rotate this box a little bit because I think it's looking a little plain, a little simple, right? That's fair. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to choose how much I want to rotate. I'm going to say I want to put it like right here. I'm going to put that down. 
like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find those areas right here. So let's just say we wanted to ro rotate like this, right? So if you go like this and kind of find these areas and these points, so using that, so first we're going to find that center line from the old one, right? Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, this, from this point to this point, this is where this box now is going to have that cross section. Uh, and then from here, we're going to follow that. And that's going to be that new, you see this right here? This is going to be that new cross section of this box. So all we did was we took the form that we had and we basically followed here this like ring. Okay. Now you might be like, hey, Sam, I don't, I don't really get it. I'll explain. I'll explain in a second why this is OP. All right. So basically, if you can do this, you've basically established a box rotating in perspective. But here's the other cool thing. You've actually established two point perspective. And so now not only have we learned one point perspective here and all of that stuff, and obviously this is a loose, uh, this is a loose diagram. So I need to kind of clean it up a little bit. But we've established not only the one point perspective, but we've also now learned how two point perspective works. And so you might be wondering, why is this so important? It's important because I want to show you guys that perspective is not about following the grids one to one and saying, okay, this is a two point perspective scene. So every single line needs to follow these two point perspective vanishing points. Instead, I want you guys to realize that in any given scene, there are an infinite number of perspective points that you can put, right? As I keep rotating this box across this ellipse, basically more and more points are gonna be added onto this horizon line as you keep rotating. So don't get fixated on one point, two point, three point perspective, because in a scene, there are technically an infinite number of perspective points. All right. Thank you. And here's also why this works so well. All right. If you if you if you literally take I'll show you guys right now. If you take this box right here, the, let's just say we draw a box. Right. And if I put a if I or so not a box, a, 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 a square. And if I just make a circle around this um around this thing right here, you're gonna notice that all I'm really doing is I'm basically rotating this box or this square in perspective, right? So I'm taking this idea of, of taking a square, rotating it along this circle here, which touches every single point, and I'm just doing that in perspective. So there you go. I would say this right here is the core fundamental of perspective. The, the stuff that art schools, you know, they, they pay or they charge you thousands of dollars for an eight week course about perspective and stuff. This is it. This is understanding perspective in five minutes or less, the bare bones, the fundamentals. If you can understand this concept, you will literally understand all the other stuff about two point, three point, fisheye lens, all of that stuff, because this is actually the core, right? And the reason why this is also important is because if you want to be able to draw characters in different angles, different scenes, all of that stuff, this is how you're going to be able to practice doing that, right? So there you go. That is the basics of uh, perspective there. Some of the key points that I wanted to highlight, mostly of which is going to be focused on the horizon line again, right? Everything is related to horizon line here. So uh, there you go. That is the that is the tutorial there. I'm going to put it all away now uh, since we don't think I don't think we need it. But let me go ahead and group it. Boom. Hide that. There you go. All right, let me know in the chat if that was helpful for those of you who are watching live. If there was anything confusing, let me know as well. If this was new info to you, I'd love to I'd love to hear um I'd love to hear what you guys think as well. If you were like, "Wow, this is this is new stuff. I didn't know about it." Because again, it took me when I was first learning perspective, I was so fixated on this idea of 1.2.3 point, 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 and that's what I thought everything you know was supposed to be. And so when I was drawing stuff in perspective, it always felt a little too stiff. It always felt a little um, a little rigid, right? Uh, I can't process right now that you said infinite points, and my brain shut off. <laughs> yeah, so. Basically, here's what I mean. Here's here's an easy way to think about it. If you look at your room right now, so if you look around and if you look at your room, right? Let's just say you st you stare at one area and you look at your room. You're going to realize that all of everything in your room, all the lines and stuff, they're going to be going at different angles. They're not all going to converge onto the same points, right? The walls might converge to a different point further away. Your monitor that you're watching me from, it might be converging a little bit this way. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you grab your phone right now and you rotate your phone and you follow the lines of where those 
where those lines converge, they're going to be pointing at different areas because not everything in, in space is going to be following the exact grid uh, you know, of perspective or of, of, a, of one or two point perspective points. There's an infinite number of, of vanishing points that they can converge to, which all converge. If there's one thing that they do converge to, it's going to be that horizon line that we mentioned earlier, because the horizon line is really the most uh, stable thing. It's going to be the eye level that the viewer is seeing at, right? I know this is this might be a little confusing to some of you, especially if, if this, you're still relatively new to perspective and stuff. And so what I would highly recommend is you try to do that demo. Um, try to do that demo that I explained to you guys earlier. And hopefully that will maybe make some more sense. So this will turn I'll, I'll be uploading this into a YouTube video in a bit. So you guys can rewatch that over on YouTube if you guys were like, man, confusing. Um, just made up way to copy 3D into 2D and don't actually exist IRL in that concrete way. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like in, in reality, not everything is going to conform to one or two perspective points. There's going to be definitely a lot of different points there to consider. Now, when we, when it comes to applying it to a little bit, something more complex, like the human body here, you're going to notice that what I'm doing is I'm still keeping in mind the horizon line that we mentioned earlier, and I'm using that horizon line to actually help me visualize whether or not I'm going to be seeing the top plane or bottom plane of something. So here, for example, because this character is way, um, the knee is above the horizon line, we're actually going to be seeing more contour, more of the circle, right? So a little bit more of the circle up here of this of this portion of the sh of the uh, lower leg there and then once we get lower and closer to the horizon line notice how this as it gets closer the ellipse is going to shrink down a little bit so again this is going back to that idea that i mentioned er or, uh, earlier right about how the closer you are to the horizon line the more that degree of the uh, the, the thing that you're seeing is going to shrink the further away you get from the horizon line whether you're going up or down the more it opens up this is going to be a hard concept to grasp. I, I know because it took me a while to understand this. But basically what I'm saying is this cylinder right here, if you were to draw a cylinder, the cylinder has a more open area at the top here than it does at the bottom here. Okay. Yeah. I, I, some of you might be like, huh, <laughs> what, a, what the heck? I know it's, it, it can be a little confusing. And I think that's probably one of the hardest things about perspective is, is being able to learn these like fundamentals and then kind of just like practice it and see it. And then I think at some point it'll click in your head. You know, it's one of those things that I think the more you do it, eventually you'll realize like, oh, okay, this is how that works. Right. Now, when it comes to drawing a character in perspective and drawing, um, uh, we're, we're drawing this guy right here. One of the best things that I like to do is I always like to establish first the most simple objects. Now, in this case right here, this guy, he's actually just sitting on a box. And so the first thing that I prioritized was actually the, the box in perspective, just kind of laying it out nice and easy. And that's, that part's not complicated, right? Drawing a box in perspective, that's kind of like, you know, you just lay it out that way. I think it gets a little bit complicated when you start thinking about the form of the character. Now, usually whenever I'm drawing characters, I always try to find the points of contact of where the character is interacting in the perspective scene. Um, in this case right here, the character is interacting here uh, on the ground plane. So right here as, as this foot is uh, touching right there. And the character is also interacting with this box over here right and so those are going to be the points that i always want to focus on first because if those points don't make any sense your characters are going to look like they're floating in space you guys know what i'm talking about put an f in the chat if you've ever tried to draw a character in a scene or perspective and for some reason it looks like you just slapped a sticker on there of your character because it doesn't look like they're matching up it, it kind of feels like they're floating or they're a little bit off right they're not actually like touching the ground the way you want them to Put an F in the chat if you've ever had that struggle. Yeah, like maybe your characters are just floating. You're like, Keeson, what do you mean? What's what's wrong with having my characters float? But you know what I'm talking about. You try to draw and you're like, hmm. And the part of the problem with that is, again, because if you are considering perspective as an afterthought with your characters, then they're not really going to feel like they're actually sitting down um, on this character. Uh, oh, sorry, in, in the scenery. So it's very important. Uh, perspective is is very much applicable in so many parts of drawing. Not just like with drawing scenery and stuff, but even with the face. 
Uh, but yeah, a lot of <laughs> a lot of Fs in the chat there. Um, let me see here. What is this? Uh, let me erase this. Okay. Cool. But now let's go in and let me draw out the face and then I'll do it again. I'll do a full, um, a full one from the beginning with you guys of this character here on the left. I just wanted to show you kind of how it'll look like as we, as we continue working on just establishing some of the primitive forms here. So right now I'm not focusing on the anatomy, which we'll get to, we'll, we'll get to, I'll show you guys all about the anatomy and all the foreshortening and all the crazy stuff. Right. But you know, I want to start simple here first and give you guys an intro of how I think about laying out characters and scenes like this, which is actually really common. If you want to work, for example, in the animation industry and you have to start laying your characters out in scenery, knowing good perspective is actually going to be such a huge payoff when it comes to uh, when it comes to working on, you know, uh, animation and whatnot. So this is a good practice to do, uh, get, get a reference image, right. And then the practice, some of the forms and stuff that we're going over, uh, today here. Yes. Welcome in. Thank you for all the follows, by the way, Epiphany, Marta, Chris VX, uh, Vex Dossi, Nev Yar, Happy Lion, Ellie Durham, Mind the Unicorn and everybody. Oh, welcome. Thank you for the prime subs and all the subs today, guys. Really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, welcome in. If you guys are new here, I hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Thank you for choosing to hang out with a nerdy educational art stream on a weekend. But, you know, I'll, I'll try to make it as entertaining as possible as well. Uh, by the way, guys, I do run ads on my stream every hour. Um, and so if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So if you get an ad, thank you. If you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub. But with that being said, I hope to see you guys after the ad break. All right. Uh, and thank you shark God for the six month sub. Damn. A lot of love today on a Saturday. I don't know, dude. It's crazy because I didn't stream. I didn't stream Saturdays last year because I felt like nobody wanted to watch on a Saturday. But for some reason in 2023, Saturday streams are, I would, I would argue are probably one of my favorite streams. Like the energy on Saturday is great. Um, I think everybody's like relaxed and just chilling from the weekdays. You know, you're like, oh man, I had a long week, KSM. I'm glad it's the finally the weekend. I don't know. The vibes, the vibes feel really good on a weekend. So shout out to everybody who's coming in here. Um, if you guys do watch me on weekdays, I still enjoy that too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not saying that, that, um, weekend, weekend viewers are superior. Hey, 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 do not, don't get that idea. I know someone out here is going to be like, you guys are going to come on a Monday stream and be like, Hey, yo, I heard Kaysen said that the weekday viewers are whack. Weekend streamers are where it's at. All right. Look, don't get it confused. Let's not have a war here. Weekday viewers versus uh, weekend viewers. All right. <laughs> People are going to be like, yeah, I don't know, man. Those weekday viewers, the weekday crew, not as cool as the weekend crew. That's not what I'm saying. Um, if you're both, I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. But uh, let's go in here and uh, let's see. I'm just going to lay out the head a little bit more. I'm going to give it a little bit more volume uh, on the top there just to, you know, give us some shape. Um, but again, all I'm really doing is I'm, I'm just adding in some basic forms, right? Let's actually make this a cube or not a, uh, a box shape right here. And then we'll worry about adding in all the anatomy and stuff, right? So again, this is just the basic rough structure uh, that we're laying out here. Nice and easy, right? Nothing too complicated overall, uh, I would say. Now, a lot of what I'm doing is I'm just kind of freehanding this one, right? So I'm not actually notice how I've never laid down a single line like this. I'm not trying to be like, hmm, does this line up here? Does this line up here? And this is a part of one talking about the things that we understood earlier about how you can, there's an infinite number of perspective points, but also to too, it comes with a little bit of experience of just understanding like, hey, these lines are going to converge a little bit more. And as they get lower and lower to the horizon line, they're going to open up a little bit more as well. So I am doing a little bit of that where I'm kind of understanding where things are working already. Um, but again, part of the reason why I wanted to do this demo today was because I wanted to show you guys that you don't need to be super fixated on one or two point or three point perspective. That as long as you're following the general rules that we established earlier about the horizon line, um, that'll actually take you a much longer way in making more believable, uh, more believable uh, scenes, uh, characters in perspective and stuff. Okay. 
but cool um let's go ahead and do this one now on to the uh what's it called we'll do this one next on the girl on the left here where we're going to draw her out and i think her pose is actually interestingly enough more complicated than uh the one on the, the right yeah i think it's a lot more complicated but we'll, we'll, we'll do both uh but yes today's topic is perspective guys and thank you for quenching my thirst appreciate that and thank you for the follows Polo, Polo two. welcome in all right let's go ahead and do that one and let me actually here's what before then um let me let me actually just color this one out so we'll just do a quick grayscale on this one uh so that way you guys can kind of see it a little bit better but yeah let me know again guys let me know if anyone here has any questions i know that this is a little bit more of a complicated uh more of a complex topic today than maybe some of the other stuff that we've covered so far but I wanted to give you guys a taste of <laughs> how my boot camps are. You know, my boot camps they're 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 good for beginners, but also they're not you know they're not limited to beginners. We we definitely get really in depth with a lot of more advanced topics. I think this is one of those things. So one of those advanced topics. So um, if you have any questions, please let me know because this is a little bit more of a tougher stream, but not it's not too bad. I, I actually think. I think this stream is a good intro to perspective that is a little bit better than maybe your standard draw a box and perspective, you know, like that's how I originally was taught. It was like, draw this box, but I always felt like drawing that box was kind of meh. It was like so boring, you know, but doing stuff like this where you're laying characters out and understanding how the characters work. I think that's actually really fun. Um, it's a really fun aspect and, and thing, a good, good thing to practice too perspective is like an onion it makes you want to cry it doesn't have to be and and hopefully hopefully today's stream will help you kind of see a little bit of that but all right let's go ahead and let's lay out now the other box and i'm just going to kind of rough these out again i'm uh, i'm not trying to match the 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 uh reference exactly because i don't really care too much about doing that i care more about just kind of capturing the overall uh the overall scene the overall vibe right and so I'm laying in here some of that groundwork and actually it looks like this one goes back a little bit more. So let me change that. Uh, but I'm just, I'm, I'm more focused about the overall feel and using that to lay out, given my own perspective and stuff. Um, where do you start to build your characters? I've seen some artists start from the head, others, the torso, others, the feet. Um, I think it really depends. Uh, for example, if you're drawing a character in a scene, or let's just say you're drawing a character, you know, for fun and they're not really supposed to be in a scene or whatever. I think it doesn't matter. You could start with the head. You could start with the, the torso. You could technically start with the feet. I think there are advantages to starting in certain areas. So, for example, if you start with the head, I, I usually find that the head is the most important, arguably the most important part of a character design. And so starting with the most important thing could make sense. Um, but let's say you're focusing more on a dynamic scene and you're looking at trying to draw someone in action. In that case, I think focusing on the torso is actually the most important thing because the torso is going to have the largest volume in the body and will probably convey the most gesture based off of how the spine works and stuff. And so focusing on the torso in that situation might actually be better. But now if you're focusing in drawing a character in perspective, kind of like what we're doing here, I would argue that the most important thing is actually the feet. Now, in this case right here, these are more complex poses, right? So, like, I think drawing this character, not even in perspective, in this pose is already hard enough. Drawing this character in perspective, in an ant's view angle, where you're looking up at her, I think makes it even harder. So, it's going to be a little bit tricky when it comes to drawing just the feet. But let's say you're drawing a character standing in perspective and stuff. Um, I would argue that drawing the feet first and making sure that the contact of the feet with the scene that they're in is probably the most important thing. Um, but again, it all depends on your preference. Um, that's how I think about it. So obviously, you know, take it with a grain of salt and apply it to your own, um, apply it to your own preferences and style, right? Because you might like to think about things a little bit more differently than I do. Uh, thank you for the follows. Uh, M4 Maddie or Maddie, Maddie U. Welcome in. 
Um, by the way, I'll do a quick intro of myself since I know that it's been a bit of time since I've done that. Uh, but welcome in everybody who's coming in today to my stream. My name is Kasem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy to perspective to gesture to character design. And I also currently work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Currently right now prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you're looking to just hang out with my dog on a weekend, or you're just trying to find Find a community out here on Twitch while you're drawing or whatever. Uh, make sure you leave a follow. Join in if you're watching from YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy today's today's stream. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about now laying in this character in perspective here. So we have this girl here who's kind of sitting down. And I want to make sure we're lining it up. We're going to be using this as a general reference. But we want to make sure we're lining it up to this character that is on the right. So not focusing on, um, I, don't, I don't want us to feel like, oh man, we have to match it exactly with, you know, the reference that we're seeing. Instead, I want us to really double down on the idea here that there, uh, we have our own established scene, our, our own established perspective, and that is what we're going to be um, focusing on overall. What is this line? Oh, okay, good. I was like, what? Let me erase this. There you go. There's that box line. I was like, where'd that line go? Um, awards. Oh, right. I totally forgot. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Uh, really quick, a quick side tangent there. Um, guys, if you didn't know, a bunch of streamers basically are doing a uh, uh, an award show this year, and they added a best art streamer category for this award show. Um, even if you don't want to, um, even if you don't want to submit for me, I highly recommend, please, you submit for whoever you think your favorite art streamer is uh, this year, last year. Um, that way we get a little bit more spotlight in the art community. I feel like oftentimes the art category in Twitch gets a little bit overlooked uh, and some people don't even know that the art category exists. So I would really, really appreciate it if you guys clicked on that link there and you nominate an art streamer um, of, of who you think is, you know, was the best art streamer for you. Again, Again, it doesn't have to be me as long as as long as you guys are submitting anything I think that would be amazing I'll show you guys really quick today is the last day to do it so if you guys haven't done it yet please it takes about a minute maybe even less to do it so you can put other people too there's a lot of there's a lot of different categories um, but the one I care most about is gonna be the art category here so like I put myself on there obviously <laughs> uh, you know you know um, but yeah I would say I would say just submit for that one and um that would be super cool. Uh I don't I don't even like I don't necessarily I mean I think it'd be cool if I did win, but I think it would just be cool in general just to highlight the art community and just be like, hey, we exist as a category and there's a there's an awesome community out here who, you know, who comes out to Twitch and regularly enjoys these things. Um so yeah. Please, please do that, guys. Again, it doesn't have to be me, um, obviously. So Whoever you enjoy watching, I think, as long as as long as we're we as a community are nominating people. I want to wrap up by the best art streamer. Yo, if I win, if I win, should I do a freestyle rap on stage? No, no, no. That's too cringe. I'm there's no way. Okay, forget it. We're not we're not let's not even say anything. <laughs> I'm not doing anything cringe. Um, but yeah, who knows? Why well, haven't you heard about this yet? Um, because it's not again, it's mostly it's mostly in the gamer space, right? So um, I think a lot of the big art, you know, not a, a lot of the big like game streamers and a lot of the, the just chatting streamers are aware of this, but it's again, not as spoken about in the art community because I feel like a lot of the art community, um, I don't know, we, we, I feel like we kind of get neglected on Twitch almost sometimes. People think of it as like a, either an afterthought or when people do click on it, they mostly see anime waifus. And look, let's be real. Some of us like anime waifus. That was great. But some people, they see anime waifus and they're like, eh, yo, this, this is our category. This is like, this is like the hot tub category where you're seeing, you know, a particular thing. But so I, I not to say that, again, these things are bad. I think it's just that uh, sometimes we, people get a misconception that there's only one thing going on in the art category because of the top streams that are happening in that 
the art category of Twitch. You get what I'm saying? Um, not that there's anything wrong with, uh, with those streams and those streamers. So I don't know. I feel like it'd be cool to get a little bit more spotlight in the art category and be like, Hey, we actually do a lot of things. There are people who teach, there are people who, uh, who do game art. There are people who do 3d art. There are people who do sculptures and stuff, right? <laughs> That's why a better has bought no drawings. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you for the follows Dini, um, and Eckley packed welcome in. And again, I got nothing against the waifu, waifu art streamers. I think they're great. Um, I, I watch a few myself. I think they, you know, there's a lot to learn. And I think it's interesting to also see that, you know, this is what people gravitate to, which makes sense. You know, it's, there's a large uh, percentage of male audiences here on Twitch. Um, thank you for the follows, by the way. Barunka, welcome in. Um, comic artists were alone. Yeah, I mean, again, there's also even comic artists, right? So I think that's kind of the beautiful thing about about the art category is there's actually so much to offer that people maybe don't know about um it's also a combined thing of bigger industry artists like yourself don't usually take the uh take time for things like this it's nice that you take the time to do this and you know that's that's actually a tr that's actually a good call out because one of the things i'm thankful for is that i became a streamer first before i became an industry studio artist and so I think because of that, I feel more comfortable and feel more natural streaming on Twitch uh, because that's where I actually started. Like I started drawing on Twitch first. Uh, and so now that I'm doing it, now that I'm working full time and stuff, it almost feels like streaming is just part of my regular routine. But I think there are cases like you've mentioned that is hard for uh, professionals to maybe find the time or even find the motivation, right, to 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 stream and stuff because streaming is not easy right i think if you're streaming casually sure it's it's not like super hard to do to get started with streaming but to to really take your streams and elevate that to a higher level and make it feel like it's worth your time uh, maybe outside of what you're already doing for work i think can be can be a challenge that not not a lot of people want to take up right uh, thankfully though, I, <laughs> I love streaming a lot and it's, it's, this is my home, honestly. And this is where I, this is where my roots were. This is where I started drawing again on Twitch. You guys, uh, you guys were here for that. I built my community here. I wouldn't be a professional artist if it wasn't for you guys. So I don't know. It feels like I, it feels like I have to do it in some ways. Not, not in a bad way. Like I'm being forced to do it. It's more just like, for myself personally, I have to do it because if I don't do it, I feel off. Um, so and also, sorry, I know I'm laying out the perspective here so fast. Uh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Let me let me talk real quick about what we did just now because some of you who might be following are like, "Yo, what the heck? You already drew out the body and everything." So if you guys weren't paying attention, the first thing that I focused on here, aside from the, the arms and all that stuff, the first thing that I always focus on again is the points of contact. So right here, I'm always thinking, what is the, what are the first things that are making contact with the, uh, with the environment that we're putting our characters in, right? In this case right here, the, the main thing that I'm seeing is going to be that, that pelvis. So this pelvis right here was actually the first thing that I drew, right? I didn't, I didn't draw the floating torso. I didn't draw the arms or whatever. I drew first that pelvis because if you can get this part right and get this part to look and feel good, then you will know, okay, well, the torso is only a little bit further up from this pelvis. So let me go draw that next. And then from there, it's like, okay, cool. Let me go ahead now and let me add all the additional limbs because that just connects from the, the torso and the pelvis. So notice how the first thing I always focus on are the contact points. In this, in this example that we did here, I focused primarily on the, the pelvis again because they're sitting, but I also drew the feet next. I think my, my order of it was I drew, I think I did pelvis first. Pelvis was one. Uh, torso was two. Then I did uh, foot was three. Other foot was four. And then you just connect the dots. Boom, 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 boom. Right. So that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Even for this one example right here, notice how I drew the pelvis first, torso next. Then I drew the legs. Then I'm drawing the arms. Right. I'm kind of working um, externally from those main core uh, main core structures. So. 
But yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the chat if that doesn't make sense. Uh, case them. There's a second triangle on the face. Illumity technique squared. There's a second triangle on the face. Technically, there's a lot. Technically, you can make as many <laughs> you can make as many triangles as you want. Um, whatever whatever helps you you know understand what's going on there. But I'm kind of interested in this second one. The second one that you found. All right. Hopefully, I'm not losing you guys with this uh, with this stream here. Hopefully, it's not like too complicated. I highly encourage you guys to try it out if you're if you're um, if you're maybe having any difficulty whatsoever with perspective and stuff because I think this is a really it's a really fun exercise and I always tell I always say that until you try doing something yourself you're not gonna actually truly understand it right like how many of you guys put an F in the chat uh, everybody who's watching put an F in the chat if you've ever watched the YouTube video an art tutorial video on YouTube, you thought you knew what was going on. And then the moment that you started trying to draw this thing, what ended up happening? You were like, damn, hmm, I thought I knew what I was doing, but for some reason it's not looking right, right? You're like, okay, let me type in how to draw hair tutorial, how to draw, how to draw um, anime face tutorial or how to draw anime waifu. And then you're like, hmm, I watched the video, but uh, <laughs> wait a minute, right? Because until you actually experience it yourself and put the practice in yourself, nothing is actually truly learned. You might have the, uh, the quote unquote knowledge in your head, which I think is what happens all the time, right? There are so many people now who are good at critiquing art, right? But not actually doing the art themselves. A lot of people are watching like, oh yeah, I watched so many videos. I know how it's supposed to be done. But like, do you, do you actually know how it's supposed to be done? Um, and so I always encourage you guys, if you're watching something and you're like, oh yeah, this seems good. This seems easy. I get it. Try it. Try it as well. Um, and that way you will really reinforce, uh, this knowledge here about, about what the heck is going on with the perspective. My enemy waifu has short brown hair. I did it all wrong. Yeah. People really wilding out here. Sometimes the comments, the comments on, um, on like Instagram posts that I see or on Twitter, man, some people get really crazy. And I just don't understand. There are people who are like, you didn't draw this character right. They're supposed to have this kind of hair and this kind of skin tone. Um, European characters are not supposed to have uh, this type of curly hair. And it's like, yo, chill out. Damn. <laughs> some of y'all really out here talking like something's supposed to be something, you know, there's always a lot of people like that on the internet. Um, uh, speaking of videos, I like the YouTube uploads. I like the timestamps, especially very, uh, very helpful. Oh, that's really great. You know, shout out to my editors. If you guys didn't know, my editors have been putting in hard work, uh, to help get these videos over to YouTube because I don't, I literally don't have the time <laughs> to do it myself. Uh, and so shout out to my editors. They've been doing great. I've been making sure that, you know, they get paid and for their hard work as well. So can we get some claps in the chat for my editors, guys? They've been killing it on YouTube. Not going to lie. CLAP's in the chat. Shout out to my editors if you're watching right now. Um, they do a great job. Um, they they also were like, Kaysen, we want to we wanna make some YouTube shorts and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I don't know about the YouTube shorts. Let's just, let's just stick with YouTube first, you know? Let's see how YouTube goes, <laughs> and then maybe we'll do some some reels and some some TikToks and all of that other stuff. But for now, let's keep it simple. Let's just focus on baby steps. Uh, thank you for the follow, too happy face. Um, but yeah, by the way, um, for those of you who don't know, I do have a YouTube channel, and um, it's been growing a lot uh, more recently. So appreciate everybody out here who actually watches the videos and leaves leaves the comments and stuff. Um, I read through everything and one of the big reasons why I wanted to start uploading my videos over to YouTube was actually because I know that a lot of you guys who do watch my Twitch VODs and stuff, maybe you don't get to, you know, leave a comment or ask any questions and stuff. But with, with YouTube, it is nice because if you guys are watching the VODs and stuff from YouTube, um, you can leave comments, you can leave questions and you might be like, Hey, I really enjoyed this topic. Do you have more topics about this? Or I didn't really understand this thing. Can you make another video about, you know, X, Y, Z. So I think that's part of one of the cool things about, um, about uploading over to YouTube. Case in YouTube shorts would be awesome. I know, but I just don't have time for it. So I have to, I got to take baby steps. 
So first, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm solidifying myself and kind of building a routine over on YouTube. And then once I feel comfortable about that and I like where that's going, then I'll look to maybe expand and upload some some shorts and, and all that, you know, but I want to I want to take it easy and I want to make sure I'm enjoying the process, too, because at the end of the day, my goal isn't to make make money or hit a million subs on YouTube or whatever. My goal really is to make sure I'm delivering good content and good quality content so that I'm helping as much people as I can, whether you guys are watching on Twitch or you're checking out my videos on YouTube. Like, that's always my goal is like, how can I how can I make quality resources and quality content? Um, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, somehow, some way, you know, make a living from that because, you know, again, I, <laughs> I got bills to pay, but my, 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 my priority is always about the quality. So, uh, does this mean I can randomly ask how to drop beards in the comments? You can technically, if you, if you're kind of like, Hey, I, I really like this, uh, this video that you did. <laughs> Can you, can you do a tutorial on drawing beards? Sure. Why not? And you know what? You know me. I, I love, I love drawing beards. Here's some characters that I did recently where I, I drew the last of us. Um, I'll actually, I'll, I'll bring it over because I, I, I watched the episode yesterday and boy, oh boy, that episode was good. Here's, um, here's some drawings that I did recently for those of you who are curious about my style and stuff and what I do. Um, again, I work as a, I work as an artist for the studio that made uh, that made Castlevania. So, if you're kind of like, hmm, your style seems very reminiscent of Castlevania and kind of like that Legend of Korra ish style, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's because that's the industry I work in, the adult animation industry, where it kind of has more of like a semi semi realistic style with a little bit of you know shapes and anime-esque feel to it i think it's a fun it's a fun industry where they make really cool arguably one of my favorite stuff or come out from the adult animation space um thank you for the follows too by the way vic queen scarlet happy face 2232 yote coyote uh dami dami chun and barunka welcome in uh let's see I just try to use my pen and move your canvas. That's funny. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the episode the episode yesterday was was great. I I really enjoyed it. And then what I like doing is I like going on YouTube and watching those Easter egg videos, so I get more of like more appreciation of what's going on. Because I don't know, sometimes you miss things when you're watching. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. I didn't I didn't catch that the first time, kind of thing. Um, and hey, how's it going, Entusia? Uh, I wish a studio like yours would have been the one that picked up the Thundercats remake. Would have absolutely slapped. I don't know who picked it up. Who picked up Thundercats? Do you get? Do you know? I think so, though. I I do agree that if um if Powerhouse worked on Thundercats, whew. but I mean I mean Powerhouse has picked up stuff like um like the Masters of the Universe um stuff, like so there's kind of like stuff like that, which I think is like a little bit of a reboot type of thing, right? Um. Oh, really? Teen Titans Go? Damn. That's so weird because I feel like... <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I, I do feel like Thundercats... I, mean, I, I, sh it's, I think it's like tailored more to, a, to an adult audience and it's supposed to be like a, a nostalgia thing. So I feel like going the Teen Titans Go route seems a little, seems a little weird. But hey, I mean, I'm not in marketing, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what their strategies are sometimes. Um, yeah, the episode is good, but we're not, um, we're not going to talk about, we're not going to talk about the episode cause I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. Right. Some people, you know, uh, some people don't have uh, work or something and so they don't get to watch the episodes right away. Uh, we're drawing Minecraft kind of. Kind of, yeah. So I'm showing you guys how I structure basic primitive shapes here um, and using this to kind of establish the characters in perspective here. So you can kind of see we've ta we've taken complex poses, which honestly, I think regardless of the perspective, these are hard poses to do. Like how many times have you guys, have you guys tried any pose like this where you try to draw a character sitting or a character 
um, a character kind of cross-legged or whatever and have it have you struggle. Put an F in the chat if you've ever had this issue where you're like, hmm, I want to draw a character sitting down and you're like, what the heck? cross leg this and that. So these are hard poses um, in general. I think adding in the perspective and stuff, whew, that makes it a little bit more challenging. But I think um, I think I've done a good job laying out the rough the rough structure here for the most part. Um, thank you for the follows, Eduardo and and Vic Queen and everybody here. Um, am I gonna draw full body in the dummies? Yeah, we're gonna do that next. I just wanted to uh, show you guys first because I think it's a lot easier to see the primitive shapes uh, like this on the mannequin structure than it is to try to draw out, you know, all the details right away. I always try to think of it as simplified versus complex, which is kind of what's going on right now, right? So these are the simplified forms that I use to um, to establish kind of these characters and stuff here that, I, that I'm seeing. Um, you guys don't have to do it this way. Obviously, there's so many different types of ways to establish your character um, in scenes, but I think this one right here works really well, and I think it gets the point across of, hey, we're drawing a human. Here are the human-like proportions, and let's kind of add more detail to that after. So, yeah. Studio 4C. Interesting. Uh, Mia Marsh, hey, welcome in. A lot of Fs in the chat, man. A lot of Fs in the chat. These are very tough poses. Even I was, um, I think more recently, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I'm actually working on a draw it in your style, which I do like once a year, but I kind of want to celebrate, uh, being very close to hitting 30 K on Twitch. So if you guys want to help contribute to, uh, to that goal that we have, I'm very close to hitting 30 K, uh, followers on Twitch. And so if we do hit that goal, I'll be opening up a uh, a draw it in your style, which I haven't done since last year. And I also haven't drawn my original character uh, in, in in a year. So I think it'll be interesting to see how I draw him this time around because it's, I think a lot has changed. I think my style has has, has changed a lot. My, my growth as an artist has changed a lot since last year. And so I definitely feel like it'll be fun. But I also have higher standards for myself this year. So yeah, I hope I hope I'm happy with it. I think which is which is my the thing I want to make sure as well. Um, but okay, so we have here our we have here our scene that we have now, and let me go ahead and just kind of fix up a few things here, um, just to kind of fix up the box, and let me go ahead and make this character a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. And I think we're good there. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. We got here this uh, structure here. Let me go in and um, do a quick little silhouette color of this one as well. And then we'll actually get into laying out all the anatomy and stuff. Let me ask you guys, because um, I don't think we've done it in a while. Do you guys want me to go over the anatomy anatomy today like do you guys want me to go in depth today or should i just kind of like be a little bit loose like do you guys want a taste of what my anatomy tutorials are going to be like or are you like hey eh, Kasem, today's a chill day i think i don't want violence today i think i just want a nice simple you know nice simple structures let me know in the chat Pull it. I think we maybe we should pull. Let's 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 pull it. Let's pull it. Okay, because I, I I feel like maybe some of you you know are a little bit more introverted and you don't want to say it out loud in the chat. Um, what you want today? Okay. All right. Here are your two options. Okay. You got here. What you want today? You want the anatomy? Give it. Or you want to keep it chill today. Keep it chill, Casey. I mean, it's a weekend. I want to see. You guys can vote. Again, I'm happy to do either or today. This is mostly for your guys' benefit. Um, you guys can choose whichever you like. And apparently there's a there's a clear majority. <laughs> there's a there's already a clear winner. But hey, keep voting because you never know. The votes might change. You know what I'm saying? You want to taste pain, you're like KSM today. I'm choosing violence. <laughs> you guys are wild. Uh, my charger connector for my Apple Pencil finally came. Oh, nice. That's cool. Um, to work from a silhouette, how should I start? 
I mastered drawing with reference, but now I want to explore. Um, drawing from silhouette. What do you mean by that? Do you mean kind of like drawing from shapes? Like using kind of just general shapes and stuff? Um, let me know if that's what you're, what you're uh, referring to. Because when I think silhouette, I, there's so many, you know, there's so many different things that, that, you, that you could be referring to. So I'm not too sure exactly here what you're, what you're talking about. Okay, but ta-da, look what we got. Woohoo! See? We got a little uh, characters here in perspective. We've got our forms. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good start so far. Uh, thank you for the follows. FJ Oquin, Barth Bartholomew, uh, Mia Marsh, Lil Coconut, and Chev Cat. Welcome into the Case and Crew, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate all the follows today. And um, I would love to know for those of you who are following and stuff. Um, I'd love to know how you guys found my stream. Was it through recommended? Was it through the front page? Was it through a friend of a friend? Did you just like my my title, my thumbnail? What was the I don't know. What what brought you guys here? Hey, okay, I'm going in I'm going to a in situ in situ drawing today. Any advice? What is that? In situ? I don't know if I know what that is. Uh Untuja. In situ. Hmm. Not sure I'm following. How's it going, based? Welcome back in. Uh, with figures or blobs, I want to make interesting characters and creatures. I think that might just take a little bit of practice, not going to lie, just a little bit of uh, exploration. It's hard to explain how to do it just from verbal stuff. Um, Atrune, hey, welcome back in. If it isn't one of my old students, Atrune has come back to learn. How's it going, man? Welcome back into the Case and Crew. Hopefully you're doing well today. Um, yeah. Let's see, you're browsing the art category and you were in the top and the title caught my eye. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Urban sketchers. We go to a place in the city and draw what we see. Oh, that's cool. That sounds like fun. Um, I would say keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't get too fixated on the small details. Just keep it nice and loose. Look at what you're seeing. Observe it. It'll probably move away. People will people walk all the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're here to study. You're here to... You, well, you guys all voted for anatomy today, so... Let's get into it, all right? So let me kind of go in here first. Let me lay out some of the general uh, simple stuff here. All right, we're going to lay out some of the basic little shapes that we got here. I just want to make sure we're covering all the all the ambient occlusion that we have on this scene, okay? But all right, so let's actually talk about placing these uh, some anatomy on these because some of you might be like, okay, hey, Sam, I'm not in the business of drawing little mannequin boxes and stuff. That's boring, case. I want to I want to draw the cool characters with foreshortening and all this and all that, right? How many of you guys in the chat struggle with foreshortening? I'm kind of curious. Put an F in the chat for foreshortening. If this is something you're like, yeah, man, foreshortening is rough. I tried to do it. I watched the Naruto episode and I wanted to draw my uh I wanted to draw my anime character doing all of this and that, but every time I draw it looks kind of funny. Right? <laughs> let's see put an f in the chat um if 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 this is something you struggle with by the way and you haven't downloaded this yet please this is, this is the most free stuff i give on my streams this right here is the cheat sheet that or this is a worksheet that we're working on today you guys can follow along and download but here this sheet right here if you are struggling with foreshortening highly recommend you download this sheet because this particular section right here is actually the secret for making good foreshortening so this pose that i drew a while back uh, it goes kind of over a little bit of that but also here's another one here uh, for perspective okay so make sure you grab these sheets guys they're free while i'm live on twitch if you're watching this after on youtube I'm sorry. I know they're not there, uh, but you can watch me on live on Twitch. If you're watching from YouTube, hop over to my live streams and you can, you can, you can grab these. I swear that my, my community is not crazy. All right. We're all pretty chill out here. Is that juke pub stock? I see. Oh, you mean, uh, this one right here? This one is, this one is definitely juke. Uh, these are the pose archives, but yeah, juke is, juke is awesome. And uh, Wolf at, at, Atisuto, uh, Mitsuko and everybody coming in here. Thank you guys for all the follows today. <laughs> we're, we're incredibly mean. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, there, uh, there's so many really good reference, uh, reference peeps to check out. Highly recommend places like uh, DeviantArt or Pinterest for finding good references, good quality references. 
But all right, um, which one do you guys want me to go over today? We can do the anatomy of either the male or the female. Just type in the chat. Is that Joel? Yeah, this is Joel. Um, that's funny you saw that. Yeah, I drew, I drew Joel in my style and how I would imagine him if if I was asked to draw character designs for Joel. And then I drew on the right, um, kind of the Pedro Pascal version of Joel, uh, based off of the HBO series and all of that stuff. So these are my my takes on Joel from The Last of Us. Um, a lot of males, huh? A lot of male votes in the chat. People are like, people don't care about the female anatomy, apparently. Interesting. Interesting. I thought I thought there'd be a case in, you know what I like, kind of thing. All right, we can do let's do the uh let's do the male anatomy. Here, here's what I'll do really quick. Um All right, we'll do we can do we can do this one. Um that's fine by me. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of this character. And one of the first things I want to talk about, and, and I want to preface, by the way, uh, this is going to get a little dense, okay? This is going to get a little dense, but hopefully it won't be too overwhelming. But I want to make sure we hit all the points and all the, all the topics today. So one of the first things I like to always do whenever I'm drawing my characters, um, especially when it comes to anatomy and stuff, is I want to always make sure we're capturing the clavicle. I would argue that the clavicle is probably one of the most important uh, bones in the torso. And the reason why is because the clavicle basically is a major connector for many different parts of the body. We're talking about the neck muscles like the trapezius, the sternocladiomastioid. We're also talking about the pectoral muscles. It also helps and connects things like the shoulder deltoids and also connects to the something called the acromion process, which is a protrusion from the back of the scapula. So the clavicle is a very important uh, bone and also it's one that you oftentimes see in a lot of people. I'm going to show you guys really quick. Look, this is like hopefully Twitch doesn't ban me for this, but you see this? clavicle notice how there's a gap between right here for the sternum and notice how it protrudes out this way and you have that tapering down here for the neck all right please twitch don't ban me i just showed a little clavicle today on stream but if you guys i haven't said this in so long this is going to sound so sus if you guys touch if you guys touch yourself right here oh god hold on hold on <laughs> i'm just i'm gonna get canceled today let me let me do it like this let me do it like this we'll, we'll do a little safer okay there we go if you if you touch yourself right here okay you'll actually find the bone and you will find right here it, 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 hey look, look 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 don't don't if you're just listening you have to watch what i'm saying all right look i know this is gonna sound sus oh my i'm gonna get canceled today if you touch your neck okay you find it right here you're gonna find the bone yeah yeah you're gonna find the bone and notice how it goes all the way back over there all right <laughs> guys please look i'm trying to <laughs> Uh, this is why I don't do anatomy. <laughs> I know it's like people be like, oh, look, what do you say? I can't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like that. It's like that these days. All right. Well, anyways, guys, let's focus here. Let's focus here. So from the clavicle, let's actually talk about all the major connections of the body, which I think let's actually start off with the neck because I think the neck is going to be the most important here. So when it comes to drawing out the character, right, we're going to establish this connection here. And right now I'm going to kind of connect the neck first and we'll, we'll kind of do this weird thing here where I'm going to do um, I'll draw the neck of the character and then we'll draw out the rest of the head after. I've never done it this way, but I think this would be kind of interesting. So first we're going to draw out the sternocladiomastioid. All right. Notice how I'm trying to shift the conversation right now. Strike one. Oh, man. Uh, thank you for the follow, by the way. Uh, G1. Appreciate that. So let's go ahead and kind of capture that sternocladioid first, right? Again, this muscle is actually a muscle that connects to the clavicle, uh, but it also connects to the back of the ear over here. So it's a great muscle to know. Um, there's a few muscles here that I really want to highlight with you guys and I want to focus on. One of them, again, being that sternocladioid. Uh, now, what's really cool about this too is it actually also helps frame the inner portion there of the, of the, uh, of the neck. And this is going to be comprised of the trachea but also going to be comprised of that hyoid bone that we've talked about before. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we've actually covered this pretty in depth in a couple of my streams. So if you guys are watching now and you haven't heard of my boot camps before, um, we cover a lot of things on my boot camp. This is day one of the boot camp where I go over the head anatomy. 
one of the things we cover is again that hyoid bone that that um, mandible of the jaw and how you can actually insert the neck into the head there and understand what the heck is going on with the volume um, of the head right so if you guys haven't seen this yet go check that out um, I think it'll be really helpful, especially when it comes to doing tough poses like this, where the character, you know, you're seeing the character from an ant's view looking up at the character. We got a redemption here. Jason is here to cancel Ksem. Let me see this. All right. Somebody, Quidditty, Quidditty redeemed a Jason redemption. All right. Pause the music. Uh, let's go bring out Jason for this one. Hey guys, it's me, uh, Jason here. Got a message from Quidditty. Wanted to let you guys know that um, KSM, he's been canceled out here on Twitch. He said one too many sus things on the platform. Uh, so this might actually be his last stream on Twitch. All right. The man is walking a fine line today. <laughs> All right. There you go. That's your Jason redemption. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let's get back into it. All right. Fun fact, the hide is the only free floating bone in the body that's responsible for making the Y sounds. It's surrounded by muscle, right? Isn't it super cool? Um, also, shout out to my um, yeah, shout out to my to my to my medical peeps in the chat because you guys can you guys can test my knowledge here about anatomy. Um, I know in the past someone was like, Hey Sam, I'm I'm in medical school right now. And for some reason, your knowledge of anatomy is incredible. You know anatomy <laughs> better than some people in my classes. And I'm like, hey, look, look, just because I'm not I'm not a doctor doesn't mean that, you know, you don't you don't you don't need to learn some anatomy out here. But I do go over a lot of these topics. But yeah, the hyoid bone is really hyoid bone is really cool. Um, but now as we go down here, um, we're also going to have here the the neck and this is going to be the. Uh, this is going to be the tra the trapezius muscles, which actually connect from the back of the uh, the back of the the spine there. So the vertebrae of the spine is also going to connect to the back of the skull, and it's going to fan its way out across there the scapula on the backside. But um, I I'm not going to talk about that too much today because again, that's we're not seeing it. It's not going to be there. And so I want to talk more about the main muscles and stuff that we're going over today that we that we are seeing right. Your arm has a funny bone. That's it. And sometimes, you know, you don't need to know all the things. I've gotten questions all the time where people are like, "Hey, Sam, do I do I actually need to know all of the all of the muscles and this and that?" No, you don't. You definitely don't need to to make good art. Um, but I think the more you do know, the better off you'll be in making stuff that's maybe a little bit more complicated or complex, right? So here we go. We've drawn out the neck there, and I'm gonna kind of fan out. And I'm gonna add the the trapezius muscles there and again these are all actually going to connect to the clavicle from this angle it's going to be hard to see that connection but you know just imagine visualize in your mind's eye what that looks like um and share artworks and alex goo welcome into the case and crew guys a ridiculous amount of follows today which i which i appreciate um but next up here i'm actually doing this a little bit differently today but let's just kind of do it in this order uh next up here let's kind of draw that jaw and again if you guys don't know what the jaw or how the jaw works basically the jaw here is comprised of the this bone called the mandible of the skull and that connects here uh from this portion of the skull goes down and there's a lot of muscles that basically funnel into this hyoid bone which creates a little bit of that tapering uh, the volume there under the jaw, but also kind of creates some of that shape that we're seeing. So oftentimes I see a lot of uh, beginner artists forget that there is a volume here under the jaw. So make sure you add that in there. It's, it's very important and it really helps establish some of that realism if that's what you're going for. Again, even if you're not going for some realistic stuff, um, you can see here in you, even even if you're doing more of an anime style or an animated style, which is what I do for work, even just having a little line like this, having that little line there just to show that, hey, you know what? I know that there's a little bit of volume right here. Sometimes that's all you need to do. You don't need to go in here and draw all of this and, and all of that and all that shading. Sometimes as simple as putting in a line can actually go a long way in establishing depth in your scene to help give that visual like, oh yeah, we know that there's some volume there. There's a little bit of structure, right? So I always tell people like sometimes when you're drawing and stuff, you don't actually have to denote everything, right? So let's go back now. Um, let me go in here and... I guess I'll work on the face really quick. I'm just going to do a generic structure for the face and then we'll, we'll come back to it. Maybe if we have some time, but I don't want to focus too much 
uh, on the face right now because, again, my main priority was going to be on uh, the overall anatomy today, and I also want to do some more perspective stuff with you guys. One of my goals today is we tackle uh, this one, <laughs> this scene in perspective, because I think this is a really hard one. Like, if you guys feel comfortable about this today... We'll do this one later, okay? And you'll you'll understand why, when we do this one, why it is such a crazy pose. It's, I'm looking at this now and I already know this is going to be a head scratcher. But I think it'll be fun. It's a fun exercise and it's one of the best ways you can challenge yourself uh, for sure, right? All right, so let me go in here, lay out the groundwork for the head. And you'll notice here how I'm actually, all I'm really doing is I'm taking that mannequin that I drew earlier, and I'm just I'm just kind of adding a little bit of form there, making it a little bit more, compli uh, more complex than, than what we had originally. Um, but I'm, I'm never, you know, I feel like, what's the word here? I feel like I'm not trying to go too crazy and, and kind of go too far away from the mannequin. I think part of the mannequin is to help give you form and structure. Now, I've gotten questions in the past where people have said stuff like, Kasem, every time I try to use the mannequin technique, my characters look and feel a little bit stiff, right? Put an F in the chat if you've ever if you've ever felt that way. You're like, you know, I saw someone do this mannequin and I tried doing it myself, but every time I try to do it, my characters, they, they kind of feel like a robot sometimes. You know, they kind of look a little, I don't know how to say it, right? <laughs> they, they, they don't look as uh, as dynamic and stuff. So here here I'll explain I'll explain why first of all that happens. The main reason why that happens is because I think oftentimes people are forgetting what the intention of the mannequin is in the first place. The point of the mannequin guys is to give your characters rigidity. It's the point of the mannequin is to give your characters structure and volume, right? That's the whole point. So if your characters look and feel stiff, it's because that's what the mannequin is doing. That's that's the job. If you want your characters to feel less stiff, you need to be able to apply stuff on top of the mannequin that gives it fluidity and form, right? So when we talk about the shoulder here, and we're going to go lay out some of the, the foreshortening, notice here how I'm using nice curves. I'm using curves and straights to really help kind of sell some of the form there, some of the some of the gesture, right? So I always tell people the mannequin's job is not to make your characters look and feel fluid. If that is what your goal is, if your goal you want your stuff to look fluid, then you need to make sure you're practicing gesture, right? Practice gesture. Make sure you're understanding how to apply that on there. Um, but the mannequin itself, the, the the job is is to make it look and feel stiff, make it look and feel like it has rigidity and volume. So that's that's kind of what I wanted to say that uh, about that because I've gotten I've heard that so many times. You're like, hey, and wow, you use the mannequin technique. Um, but why does your stuff not feel stiff and my stuff does? And again, a lot of that just comes down to me using the mannequin as for what its intention is, which is mostly for structure and form. And then I go in with my own stuff here afterwards and I'm applying my own uh, gesture. I'm slowly working in the forms here. There you go. Yeah, that looks good. Um, thank you for the follows. Alisa Tra Alisa, Alisa Traff and also Yermia. Appreciate you guys coming in here today. Welcome in. Hot tip for chatters who want to draw coll collarbones. They curve and point backwards as they go to the scapula, which is noticeable if you're drawing higher or lower angles. Exactly. Actually, that's a great call out. Um, one of the easiest ways to think about the collarbone is to imagine bicycle handles. You know, got you guys know how like the bicycle, it kind of goes like this and then you have like the handle here right and then here's like a happy person look at me dad i know how to ride a bike kind of thing <laughs> you know what I'm talking about um and so i think that's kind of an easy way to think about the the clavicle is just think of it as like a a bike handle and stuff um and hey lucky ducky welcome back in for us, almost the exact same thing years ago. Yeah, you can, there's so many things. You can you can think of it as a bike. You can think of it as like a recurve bow. Uh, you can think of it, I don't know. Uh, you guys can get creative with it. Um, but let's go ahead really quick and add the mouth in here. Okay, there you go. And again, I'm not going to focus too much on the face. So I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave the face a little bit simplified today. All right. So apologies for those of you who are like, hey, 
I want her to see the full face drawing. Okay, and maybe maybe later, maybe we'll maybe we'll refine it and stuff, and and we'll do more details. But I think for now, this is a good place to start uh, for the face. You know, a little bit of structure here, just to kind of get it uh, get it going. For now, we'll make him bald, uh, bald like the avatar. Okay, cool. Um, let's go in now and let's start talking about the rest of the anatomy that we've got here. All right. How do you take notes when studying uh, an art subject? Oftentimes what I do is I'll try to highlight the key components. And then usually when I, the way that I take notes is I try to draw it myself. I think that's one of the most effective ways as an artist to practice taking notes is I'll actually practice drawing the stuff myself and making sure I understand it um, in a way that makes sense to me. So that's kind of how I take notes. And I mean, you guys have seen it, right? So for those of you who are curious how I take notes, I would say just, uh, check out my boot camp because <laughs> the way that I run my boot camp is literally how I, how I run and, and uh, how I run taking my notes and all of that stuff. So yeah, but okay, let's move down now to the torso and we'll talk a little bit about the muscles here. And while we do this, I'll also explain to you guys how I think about foreshortening for those of you especially who maybe struggle with foreshortening, because I think this scene here is full of foreshortening, which I think is great. Um, but that, that means it's a little difficult as well, right? So we'll talk about that right now. Um, we need an arrow to the head. Fine. Okay, we'll do it. Just for you guys. Just for you guys. All right, there you go. There. Happy? Sheesh. Um, okay, going back here now, let's talk a little bit about the... Um, let's go talk about the clavicle again, but this time let's kind of go behind or below the clavicle and we'll talk about some of the muscle groups that are actually connecting to the clavicle here uh, that are below now the neck and we're talking mostly about the torso and stuff, okay? Uh, when it comes to making 2D art, uh, work of any kind, would you use the subscription service that other professionals use on a daily basis or should you use one-time purchase applications to cover other expenses? I, that's a, that's a, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I think that's, I think it depends. Depends on what you're comfortable with, right? Now you also need arrows on the legs and arms. Oh man, look what we've committed to guys. See, this is what happens. <laughs> Anyways, let's go in here and let's talk a little bit about the structure here of uh, something called the pectoral muscles. Okay, so what's really cool about the pectoral muscles are that the pectoral muscles basically are going to connect and insert into uh, a couple places. One is going to insert to the clavicle here. So we're going to have the portion here, of the clavicle uh, kind of fanning out this way. Uh, two is going to connect to the sternum over here. So there's going to be that, that muscle right here like this. Uh, and then three, it's also going to insert into the humerus bone right here. So that upper portion of the arm there. And so all of those things are going to insert like this, and that's going to create some of that wrapped out form. Now, when you have the arm uh, raised like this, like kind of like, well, how we have it here, what's going to happen is the, the pectoral muscles are actually going to pull up a little bit there and they're going to go into and up and insert into that arm over here, right? As it makes its way into that portion of the arm, uh, what's going to happen is the deltoid muscle, which is the muscle there of the shoulder, so the shoulder uh, muscle there, that's actually going to go in and overlap the pectoral muscles. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the portion here of the deltoid, and I'll explain to you guys the three places that the deltoid connects to the body and also what the deltoids do. So the deltoids are going to connect to one, the end of the clavicle here, so the latter, two, the latter third there of the clavicle. It's also going to connect here to something called the acromion process, which is the bony protrusion um, coming out of the back of the scapula. And then last but not least, it actually connects to the underside there of the ridge of the scapula. So these three sections of connection right there are going to kind of help you understand the deltoids, but also understand uh, a little bit of what they do. So the deltoids, there's going to be a posterior, anterior, and then a medial section of, is it medial or lateral? I forget. Uh, medial is inside, lateral is outside. So 
posterior interior we'll just call it side i think it's lateral um but anyways there's going to be three sections there and all of those things are going to be correlated to where the where the deltoids are connected and they're in charge of a lot of the mobility and range of motion here of the arm but also in charge of raising that clavicle as well too so you can kind of see how you can use the clavicle there along with the trap muscles in the back so what's interesting going back here now to the anatomy is that b this deltoid muscle basically now also overlaps the the um the pectoral muscles that we talked about earlier so the pectoral muscles are going to insert into the into the arm there but the deltoids also insert into the arm and they're going to actually overlap the form there of the of the pectorals okay oh sorry yeah medial medial means middle i think i was thinking um not medial uh what was i thinking was it not lateral? okay hold on uh what is inner what was I thinking that was inner? See, I haven't done anatomy with you guys in so long. I have to figure this out now. Give me a sec. It's bothering me. Uh, da, 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 da. What was I thinking? I was thinking the inner side there. I was definitely thinking of something, 100%. I want to know it now. Give me a sec. I'm going to find it. I said lateral, which is right. Okay, yes. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to find this now. I was thinking of, no, not distal. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking of the legs and the vastus medialis. So... In reference to the into the into the leg muscles, which we'll talk about later, I was I was thinking more about how the vastus medialis is on the interior side there of the of the leg. But yes. Anyways, guys, really quick, um, I do run ads on my stream every hour. One's gonna be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. Uh, um, they do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. And if you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub, but either way, thank you for your support. And I hope you guys enjoy, uh, the rest of the stream. All right. But anyways, um, as we, uh, as we kind of go back in here, right, let's kind of talk a little bit now about the arms and stuff. So again, I'm kind of laying out here all the muscles and stuff, but when you're drawing out your characters, you don't actually need to draw out all these lines. Um, I always say like, you know, just draw what you feel is most appropriate. Sometimes you want to draw all these lines. Sometimes you don't. Um, I personally like to just kind of keep it nice and loose, but it's really up to your own uh, preferences there, what you want to go for, right? Well, let's kind of go in here now and let's kind of talk about the arm muscle right here. And let's work on adding in some of the form there of the arm, right? So after we've established the, and let me do it actually on both sides here so we can kind of talk about it here as well. Um, so after we've established the pectoral muscles, which we'll do on this side as well too, uh, we're going to realize that again, a lot of these connections are going to just wrap into the arm right here. We're going to have the deltoid muscle, which is going to kind of go in here and also create some of that shape. And also the deltoid muscle, they kind of uh, connect and kind of uh, converge a little bit more on the upper portion here, upper front portion of the arm. So not necessarily on the middle there of the arm, a little bit more closer to the front side. Um, and so you can kind of imagine as it, as it starts to wrap its way around there, you'll see a little bit of that deltoid kind of curving more uh, this way. So oftentimes what people do, gesturally speaking, is they'll add a little bit of a line here. And this line, and a lot of these smaller details, is actually what's going to help you out a lot when it comes to establishing things like foreshortening and, and whatnot. So we'll kind of go in there like that. And then let's go in now and let's go back to the portion here of the, uh, of the arm that we've got going on. Also, how are you guys holding? Are you guys holding up okay? How are you guys doing? <laughs> Is the anatomy dense, as I've, as I've said, as I warned you guys? Have you, has it, is it helpful? Hopefully it's still, um, oh, 
Oh, damn, the liquify undid itself. Hopefully it's um not like too complex though. I'm trying to go at it piece by piece and also go over each of the components as a general structures and more about where they insert and less about like you need to know this name and you need to do this and that. Because I think doing that, like sure, it's great, but from a beginner standpoint, I don't think it's as important, to be honest. I'm explaining well. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, an elemental geo. Hey, ads are over. Okay, cool. I didn't I didn't really talk that much during the ad break, by the way. So if you felt like, hey, did I miss anything? Um, no, you're good. You did not miss anything. Uh, but okay, let's talk a little bit now about overlaps and how you can kind of utilize this stuff for for shortening. Now, the area right here underneath the bicep, uh, sorry, underneath the pectoral is actually going to be the bicep. So the, the bicep muscle actually connects here to the humerus joint um, and they kind of sit in between the um, the bicep, sorry, the pectorals and the deltoids over here, right? And then on the other side right here, we're going to have the triceps in the back, which we're not really going to see. Um, but if you take a look at this reference, you might be seeing like, hey, Sam, what the heck is all of this stuff right here? So interestingly enough, right here on the in-between of the bicep and the tricep is going to be something called the ridge muscles. All right. There's it's a grouping of muscles here, which basically originate and insert into uh, into here between the bicep and the tricep. And then also connect into the forearm there onto the, let me double check if I remember this, the thumb side, the thumb side here of the arm. Okay. So that's kind of what's going on there. Now you'll notice that when I actually go over these, um, these muscles and these lines, part of what we're doing here is we're also going to establish some of these subtle overlaps, um, of the arm here, because it is, it is in these little overlaps where we're going to be seeing a lot of the foreshortening. So you don't have to actually draw um, everything overlapping. You can just kind of add in a few subtle lines and that should hopefully denote some of the structure and overlap of the form, right? Um, I only know deltoids. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, again, if you're watching right now and if you're kind of confused, I would say just, you know, take a... Take a breather from it, you know, don't like try to copy everything because it's again, a little, a little te a tedious, but you know, just try to, I guess you can always watch it at your own time and your own pace if that's something you're looking to do. Um, but going in here now, you're going to notice a couple of things. One, this form right here, which actually connects to the, uh, the elbow, which we haven't drawn yet. So you can kind of imagine there's an elbow here. Uh, but this form is actually going to go in and it's also going to now insert into the thumb side. This is kind of what we were talking about earlier. So the forms are going to wrap around and they're going to connect to the thumb side there of the wrist. And you can imagine this wrist really kind of being a box like structure, right? So I'm going to kind of simplify it here to a box and we'll start adding some more taper there. So the, the forms are going to wrap around and that's going to also create some of that, that structure there of the forearm. You can see that right here now. And this is where you can start to kind of go in and be like, okay, cool. So we have here the elbow, also known as the ulna. And then we're going to start wrapping out some of the other forms there. As a medical professional, I really feel I should know more about muscles. I'm very disappointed. It's all good. I feel like, I feel like, you know, it's probably important if you're a medical professional, but if it's not in the field, like if it's not required for your field of work, I'm sure it's not like that important. If you're telling me you're a doctor though, then yeah, I might be like, Hey, <laughs> you might, you might want to, you might want to know it, but if not, it's okay. Um, as someone who does an, uh, armor study anatomy, I'm immediately having a good time. Hey, nice. That's good to hear. You know, I'm always, um, I'm always trying to make sure I balance the, um, what's it called? making sure I try to balance here the, 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 the stuff that we're covering. Cause I don't want to overwhelm you guys too much. I think this is a lot of heavy stuff. And especially if you're still a beginner, again, I always tell people, if you're still a beginner, don't worry at all about all of the stuff that I mentioned just now. Uh, just focus primarily on the initial stuff that we talked about, which was going to be the oops, uh, the fundamentals of form, right? How do you establish these basic structures? Because you don't need to know all of this stuff. Again, you can, you can do it. And, and I think it'll make your stuff cool if you know how to do it, but you don't need to. 
Um, right now, what I'm drawing in here is going to be the extensor muscles, and those are going to connect on the outer side there of the arm, so the, the outer part of the arm there, um, and they're going to also connect here below and, uh, sorry, uh, next to the ulna bone right here, which is going to be the elbow, ulna elbow, all right? Uh, next up here underneath that, so there's going to be onto the pinky side right here, uh, there's going to be the, the ulna, which kind of wraps, so not the ulna, the... Oh, I forgot this one. Uh, give me a sec. There is the humerus, ulna, radius. Oh, okay, good. So this is the ulna. So the ulna is going to basically make its way down to the pinky over here. And underneath that is going to be where we have the other muscle group of the forearm, uh, which is going to be the flexor muscles, I believe. It's been a while since I've, I've done this review. So I'm pretty sure it's the flexors. But basically, that is going to be your structure of the forearm there. Um, again, you can add as much or as little as you want for, um, for this, but I like to kind of just add a few lines, which hopefully help denote a little bit of the form that we're working with here. So these little subtle overlaps that we have are going to be actually what makes it, what makes that foreshortening happen. Again, it's not all about the crazy forms. So the stuff here that I'm showing you guys, all of these little subtle overlaps right here, this one right here, uh, I'll, I'll highlight it in a more uh, broad red. This right here, the subtle overlap of the of the um, ridge muscle over the the tricep there in the back. This right here, the ulna over the flexors. These are very little subtle things that that again you can start to see help create some of the form and give some of that dimensionality. Right, super subtle stuff that we're covering right now. But I think that's really where the secret of foreshortening lies. It's not going to be in um, and all the crazy stuff. Cause again, all that foreshortening really is, is if you take, right, you take this form that we've been drawing like the cylinder, right? So you draw a cylinder in perspective. I'll do that really quick. So imagine if you had a cylinder in perspective like this, and if you want to turn that cylinder into an arm, right? How do you do that while still making that look normal? So maybe we'll go like this. I'll give it a more dramatic feel, right? So here's like a cylinder of something going in perspective something crazy like a crazy dynamic pose like that the real trick here is to not draw all the lines but instead just kind of draw the subtle overlaps right so we're going to draw that subtle overlap there we're going to draw the subtle overlap here right and all of that stuff right there when you see that erase now ooh, look at that we have more of an organic arm here right subtlety subtle overlaps i think are going to be very key um in establishing uh, stuff like foreshortening with, uh, you know, with your details. So here's more of an arm shape right here. You can kind of see it now that I'm fleshing it out, right? And then you can put the hand and all of that stuff here, right? Here's a hand. You see what I'm saying? Did that make sense? Let me know in the chat if that was helpful. Um, thank you for the follows. Kospa, Ra, you crazy, uh, idiot, 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 IP, the Varus one, Almost Xander, Elemental Geo, and everybody else coming in here. And also, guys, if you do enjoy this stuff, by the way, I have a YouTube channel. Um, people might be watching this on YouTube right now if you're watching the video later in the future. But I do have a YouTube channel. I'm trying to be super proactive on there and upload somewhere between two to four videos a week. So if you guys enjoy this stuff, like the, what, what you're seeing now, there's going to be a lot more of this um, in the future on my YouTube channel. So hopefully... Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one so far. It's again, a really dense stream, but I'm trying to make it as digestible as I, as I can out here for you guys. Okay, cool. Um, but with that being said, Let's kind of move in now to the rest of the form. Uh, I guess we'll do the other arm really quick because let's just make our way um, through here. Feels like a lecture. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. You hey, remember, remember, you guys asked for this. OK, we made a poll and I said, do you guys want the spice today? You want the anatomy today or you guys want it to be chill? Little chill, easy stuff today. You guys voted majority voted. You guys wanted the anatomy today. I hope you guys aren't regretting it. All right. You're like, Kasem, I'm sorry, bro. It was, <laughs> I'll take it back. Keep it chill. Keep it chill. 
You like this? Okay, cool. Enjoying watching and lurking. Concept art uni student here, and we're just starting uh, to cover this kind of stuff on the course. So quite interesting to watch. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, also, I haven't given an intro of myself in a bit of time, so let me give myself a let me give a quick intro for those of you who are tuning in for the first time. Uh, here we go. I'll do the I'll do the other cam view. Okay, we're going three, two, one. What is up, crew? My name is Kaysem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, perspective, gesture, to character design, and I also work full-time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Currently, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are looking for some free art education, you like seeing my dog over here sleeping, or you're just looking for a stream to hang out with on the weekends, uh, feel free to follow my stream. If you're watching from YouTube, subscribe and all that stuff and with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed today's stream all right there you go that's my little intro about me welcome in guys thank you thank you for um everybody coming in here and stuff but yeah that's uh that's me if you guys have any questions by the way about me what i do for work uh what did i used to do for work feel free to ask i used to be a software engineer fun fact i worked in the tech industry for about five years as a software engineer and then more recently i decided i wanted to draw and i decided to try to make that pivot and now i work um i work as an artist in the animation industry uh castlevania yeah i okay so i i i always like to preface i joined after castlevania was made okay so i didn't actually work on castlevania i'm working on a different production uh right now but i think the stuff that we work on is pretty much kind of similar uh to to that in some ways um thank you for the follows so whoa so many follows just now are you guys bots uh sketch sketch -er, uh darkest hour and say moo thank you for the follows today i'm a little oh an another follow dark shoot benny benoit benoit blanc <laughs> damn what the heck what's my doggo's name his name is arrow he's an akita um thank you for the follows today i don't know what's going on just now i hope you guys are not bots <laughs> just uh, like so many like okay like one or two okay you know what i'm saying like one or two is all right but like there was literally like five five six of you guys who followed just now what the heck thank you guys i appreciate it i hope i i genuinely hope you guys are not bots um but even if you are it's okay man we let we let everyone come in here all right we don't discriminate viewers we let the bot viewers come in too why not I'm not a bot. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, somebody redeemed puppy power. Here's my dog. Um, let's see here. Do you use company hardware like a Cintiq for that work or your own? Um, you can. I, they asked me if I wanted to, but honestly, this is going to sound crazy, but I use my iPad. <laughs> I use my iPad for everything. Um, though, um, the only thing is... You know, I haven't actually tried. Hmm, this might be a problem. If I need to work on Toon Boom Harmony, hmm, that might be something. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mostly use my iPad for everything. Um, but they did offer it. I just didn't want it. Yeah, I was like, eh, I'm okay. Um, thank you so much for all the follows today, guys. You guys are crazy. Um, oh, you guys know each other. Hey. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad. I don't know how you guys found my stream. Some of you said recommended earlier and stuff. So thank you. Um, I'm always curious to see how people, you know, come across my channel. So if you guys want to just share, you're like, hey, I found you because of so and so, or I found you because Twitch showed your stream. Let me know. I'm always genuinely curious and surprised how people ended up in my channel. Like sometimes people are just like, yeah, I like the title. The title seemed kind of cool. Some people are like, oh, the. I saw the thumbnail. I saw you did some uh, some anime waifus or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> I never did that. But hey, I mean, if it works, it works. You know what I'm saying? Um, but let's go in here and let's let's add in that wrist again here. So I'm going to kind of add in the form there. Uh, we're going to add in the palm right here. OK, um, and here we're going to do the same technique. I'm going to be applying again the form and the anatomy, starting off with that ridge muscle first. And what's really cool about the ridge muscle is that muscle really goes in here and it basically just kind of creates like this wedge shape as it bends. So that's kind of nice. Um, but you can use that again to establish some of the structure and form. 
Um, the bicep is going to be kind of right here. Again, it's going to be inserting into the, um, inserting both in, into the deltoid or not into under the deltoid and the pectorals right here. Uh, pectorals being the chest muscles, right? So if you guys have ever done pushups before, um, you would know, you would know where the, where the pecs are. If you're doing them right, if you're not doing your pushups right, then yeah, you're maybe not going to feel it, <laughs> but hopefully you're doing your pushups right. And you're not injuring yourself. Okay. Um, but let's go in here. I'm actually going to lower the clavicle just a tad bit because I feel like it's a little bit high up. So I'm going to kind of bring that down. And then that way we have a little bit more room there also for, um, uh, a little bit more room there for the the trapezius muscles. And then I'm also going to flip this here. And then we get some more, we get less room here for the deltoids. Because I, I don't want the deltoids to be too big. Because then it starts to feel a little too cartoony uh, for my personal preference. Okay, cool. Um, thank you for the follow purple wave and metal fingers and that damned panda. Appreciate that guys. Thank you for the D shrimp too. Uh, but I recently followed after you raided tofu senshi. Ah, yes, I do love raiding tofu. I was searching in the art section on Twitch and I opened some of our streams and I stuck to yours. Ah, thank you. My, my Yoli. I like when I work on to art to have a stream on my second monitor for inspiration. Yes, I agree. Pushups for triceps are valid too. True, true, true. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Um, perhaps you can show me, to, <laughs> you don't understand. Let me, yeah, don't worry. We got a, we got a 30 day boot camp. So if you guys, if you guys are like, man, K Sam, I don't really get it this time. It's okay. We've got 30 days where we're going to be going over a bunch of topics, uh, like what you're seeing today. Um, and so plenty of opportunities for sure to, to get some good education. If that is something you guys are looking for, but also again, I want to remind you guys that I am, I am on YouTube too. So if you guys are like, man, case I'm, I needed a pause. You're going a little fast for me, or I missed one of your notes and stuff. Um, again, you can check me out on YouTube. I I'm trying to upload a lot more over there. And so you can always replay, replay all the stuff that I, that I got over there on the on the tube. Uh, did you notice chat trying to drown you with five thirst redemptions? Oh, did they? Thank you, chat. I, I, I only saw one, but I'll drink it. <laughs> you guys are like, let make them drink. Good thing I'm drinking. Uh, good thing I'm drinking tea today. Imagine if this was like, uh, all right, guys, we're going, we're going to drink some beer today. <laughs> it was like a beer redemption. Damn. Drunk. Drunk, uh, drunk art streams with KSM. Drink and draw. That's what we're going to be calling them. Um, <laughs> drink and draw streams out here. That would actually be insane. I love drawing forearms. I used to hate drawing forearms. And then I, I realized how the forearms work. And then now I'm like, oh. They're not, they're not as crazy. Actually, that's not true. They're still, they're still crazy and they're, and they're still, they're still hard to draw, but, but I'm, I'm not as intimidated by them as I, as I used to be. I used to be like, dude, I hate, I hate drawing forearms, but now they're a little bit more chill. I'll understand the anatomy. Um, yeah. Forearms, <laughs> bro, is this guys, is this a good joke or a bad joke? I'm only seeing two arms, not four. <sighs> Good joke, bad joke. I All right, I'll give it to you. That's pretty good. Drunk fist style. Yeah, there you go. There's a lot of thirst quenching today. A lot. Why? Everybody's redeeming it now. What? Everybody redeemed thirst quench. What the heck? I'm glad I'm finally back. I've been dealing art ever since school started. No worries. I understand. How many of you guys? How many of you guys in the chat right now feel like you have uh, maybe been neglecting art for a little bit of time? Put an F in the chat if you're kind of like Kasem. You know, I wanted to do some art, but lately I've just been feeling like it's either I'm too busy with work or something. But I want to spend more time with it. You know, with school, right? Some of you still are still in school and stuff. I get it, guys. Okay, it can be tough. It can be tough, especially if you're, if you're not in the mental state for it as well, too, because I've been there. I've been in that situation where, you know, you, 
you you want to draw but sometimes it's just like frustrating because you're in you get in your head right you start drawing stuff and nothing looks good or you start drawing and then you start you know you start feeling like what's the point sometimes or you're like you're too busy you're too tired so i get it i've been there um if there's anything i'll say about that is um I always tell people like, hey, if you're just looking to uh, looking for someone to draw with and stuff, you guys can always pull up my streams. Um, I'm here Mondays, Tuesdays, Mondays. I always forget my schedule. Mondays, Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So if there's ever a time you just look, man, I don't really feel like drawing, but maybe I'll draw during this time. You know, come through, come through, hang out here on my streams. It's a pretty chill, uh, pretty chill stream, and I always give you guys something to draw. So even if you have nothing to draw. I always have a worksheet that you guys can follow along with. Um, if that's if again, if that's what you're looking for, if you already got something that you want to draw, perfect. You know, go ahead and um, get on that one and wishing you the best. Okay, but I'm going to leave uh, I'm going to leave the hands for later because again, this is. I'm not trying to do all the crazy details today. We'll get to the hands maybe towards the end after I lay out all the general anatomy. Okay. Uh, once we do all that, then I think we'll be good to go for uh, everything else here. Okay. Uh, but let's go in now and let's talk about the rest of the forms that we've got here. Uh, so we, we talked about the upper torso for the most part. Everything underneath here is going to be a little bit hard to see. I'm not going to lie. So I think what we can do is actually first, let me, let's see if I can do this without messing it up. I think the, the, the hand should go like this and then the hand should wrap around, uh, this form here of the wrist kind of like that. Um, thank you for the, thank you for the prime sub. Relax, Quasar. Appreciate that. And, uh, thank you for so many follows today. Ashu bless, Ashu bless you. Thank you for the follow. It's a great name. Uh, Rudy crown, Kayoni draws, and thank you for the prime sub again. Relax, Quasar. Mm, any tricks to get started when you don't want to? Any tricks to get started when you don't want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Any tricks to get started when you don't want to get started? Um, well, personally, I always tell people, you know, don't, don't force yourself to draw because oftentimes that's just going to lead to bad results. But I think if you do feel like, Hey, I'm trying to do a routine where I want to draw regularly or this and that. And so I want to make sure I'm hitting my quota. I think sometimes being okay with just doing simple things is completely fine. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is that on days where I'm not really in the mood to draw, but I know I want to do something. I want to like put something on paper. Um, I like to just do some 10 minute figure drawing, right? So I'll, I'll pull up like, um, a website, like quick poses or anything like that. Uh, spend about 10 minutes just drawing two minute poses and that's it, you know? And if that's all you do that day, that's completely fine. I think that's, that's more than enough. And oftentimes that's better than nothing at all. Right? So I always say you don't have to, every time you draw, you don't have to make a masterpiece or anything like that. Sometimes you just go in and, you know, draw a little something. And, and then move on from there. If maybe after that, you're feeling like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good, actually. Maybe I'll draw some more after. Then go ahead and do that. But I think sometimes we have this issue, and, and I used to have this issue all the time, where I felt like every time I went to go draw, I had to make something that looked really cool, right? It had to be the coolest thing ever. It had to, you know, it looked good. And if it didn't look good, it was like, what's the point? Sometimes the point is not about making something that looks good. Sometimes the point is just about practicing and, and learning new things and trying to try to, you know, get out of your comfort zone and stuff. Okay. But anyways, I'm spending a little too much time there on the hands. We'll move away from that for a second and we'll come back to it. Uh, when we, when we are done with all the other forms here, let's see here. Why is your dog napping on the floor? If their <laughs> bed is nice to them. Dude, I don't know. You should ask him. That's a very great question. He he never sleeps on his bed. Only just doing some personal artwork today for the first time in months. Hey, that's great. That's great to hear. Draw only one circle, but make it perfect. Yeah, you can do that too for like 10 minutes. 
<laughs> All right, let's talk. Let's go down here. Um, and I know it's going to be hard to see because we have the we have the arm here crossed over. And so I kind of wish I hmm hmm. Actually, I was going to say I kind of wish I drew I drew the torso first, but we can actually draw. I'm going to try to imagine it for you guys here. Okay. So you can imagine a center line here of the of the torso and stuff. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to find here that fifth rib. So you can imagine the rib cage here. The rib cage is actually going to be pretty compressed into the body, right? Um, but knowing that is actually going to help us out because here we can now figure out and establish some of the form here of the pelvic area. Uh, this right here is going to be the abdominal uh, abdom abdominal region of the uh, of the torso making its way down to the pelvic region right here. Okay. Uh, and then from there, you can really just add in a compression here. So this is going to be where that fifth, um, so the, there's the 10th rib here. So look, this is going to sound sus. So I want you guys not only to listen to me right now, if you're, if you, if you have me tabbed out on the side and you're listening to me, fair warning, this is going to sound sus. Okay. But actually here, I'll, I'll make it, I'll make it less sus. Here we go. If you guys go right here, Okay, and touch yourself right here, um, kind of in the, the torso area. All right, <laughs> listen, 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 look, 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 listen, listen. If you go right here and touch yourself right here, you're going to find something called the 10th rib. Okay, there's a bony protrusion on the sides here of your torso, and that's going to be the so the, the ribs are there's 12 sets of ribs there. The 10th rib is going to be the one that's going to be farthest out, and it's going to be touching right here. All right. And what's really great about this is it usually is a great place where you're going to be seeing folding happening of the torso if you're bending down like this. I know it looks sus on camera, but guys, listen, listen, you got to find Yeah, you find the bony. OK, that sounds even worse. I, I, I don't know why I read that. Find the bony. What is this, guys? You're trying to get me banned today? Jeez. Find the bony? Who says that? Anyways, guys, hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you found it for yourself, okay? I don't know if you found something else. That's on you. That's not on me. Okay, but I'm saying find the find that tenth rib. And what's really great about knowing where that tenth rib is is that this can actually help you again figure out where to add that compression um, for your character, right? So here we're gonna put that compression um, on this character. Uh, right there on the rib before we add in all the other stuff like his legs and stuff there on the side right here We're gonna be adding in the oblique muscles uh, And that's about it for the torso over here. You can't really see anything else. So we're not gonna worry uh, too much about that. Okay <laughs> Yo, yeah, you guys finding it as I as I can estimate we will not approach second reference riding a bike or whatever It is it's completely okay for me, but just FYI um, I think we will. Okay. Because I, um, I think we can get to it because I stream, I stream a little bit longer on, um, I stream longer on Saturdays. And so I can get to it, but I don't think what, I think what we'll do is I will not go over, um, I'm not going to go over the girl here. So we're not going to draw the girl here. I'm only going to draw this guy here. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll jump into doing this reference today. Okay. I kind of want to do this one today. I, I feel like this is a fun one to do. Um, how do you overcome the, I don't know what to draw and my ideas are too hard to draw for me. I'm not good enough yet. Um, how do I overcome that? By studying. That is what I do all the time. Every time I, in my mind, I say, man, I don't know what to draw. And here's the thing. It's not that you don't know what to draw, right? So this is this is a great actually a great question. So it's not that you don't know what to draw, but it's that the things that you want to draw, you've already told yourself that you can't draw it, that you're not able to draw it, right? That the ideas as you've said are too hard for you. Put an F in the chat if you if you've ever had that mentality before and you're like, oh, "I don't know what to draw today." But really, it's not that you don't know. It's that you've already shut yourself down. You've already, you've already shut down all the possible options of things that you can draw. And so instead you're like, eh, I, I'm just not going to draw. Right? So how do you deal with that? One of the best things you can do for yourself, if you have that issue is think about the things you want to draw. Maybe you find a reference or an artist or somebody who's doing that kind of stuff. And then I want you to study study what you feel like you are lacking that they might have. Right? Maybe you're like, Hmm, I want to draw some cool dynamic poses, but I don't really know how to do that yet. 
right? What am I not understanding? Okay, well, let me try to draw a dynamic pose. And you're like, okay, I can't really make it work. Well, then maybe you're like, okay, well, if I can't make a human body dynamic, what about if I draw boxes? Can I make boxes look and feel dynamic, right? So you want to work your way down and see what you can study and see what you feel like makes sense. And then from there, start working your way up. But oftentimes I find that the issue isn't necessarily that you don't know what to do. It's that you've already mentally lost the battle because you've already told yourself, hey, there's a lot of things you want to do. It's just that you don't know how to do it. So you shouldn't even try. You get what I'm saying? Hopefully that answers your question. I think it's a great it's a great question. And it's one that I think oftentimes a lot of people struggle with. I used to struggle with that problem all the time where I would literally just just not even draw for the day because I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to draw because all the things I want to draw, I can't do. Right. And so you've already disappointed yourself in a way. It's kind of weird. It's kind of crazy. But yet we do it all the time. We, we go through this kind of mental uh, mental gymnastics. All right, let's go in here and let's draw some leg anatomy. I think that'll be really fun. Um, and then I think we'll move on to the next pose, all right? I have trouble keeping torsos the right length. Do you have any tips for keeping the rib cage and pelvis the right distance apart, especially when the spine is curving? You guys want the easiest tips for drawing torsos? Here's the easiest tip I can give you, all right? When you're drawing the torso and the pelvis, think about two squares like this. Okay. Two squares. Now these are just rough generalizations, right? Take this rough, take this, uh, take this two squares, stack them on top of each other. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this one halfway. All right. So what have I really done here? Let me go like this and kind of, uh, taper it out a little bit. Basically this right here, this upper portion right here, that's going to be your rib cage. Okay. So you can kind of fit it in this little box right here. Tenth rib goes there. Arch it this way. Bring it back this way. Sternocladia, not sternocladia, uh, sternum right here. Fifth rib goes there. Okay. And that's going to be your portion there of the rib cage, right? This right here, this is going to be your pelvis, right? So it, what I'm trying to say here is if you can draw these two squares stacked on top of each other every time that's all you got to do so you want to draw this thing a character bent like this draw the two squares okay cut that out get rid of this there you go okay rib cage goes here this is the character's back right here. They're bent this way. Cheeks, booty cheeks, body stretching. Legs going this way. You see what I'm saying? There you go. Easiest way. Easiest way I can think of. Um, and the, 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 the kids, this is the character's back, by the way. <laughs> you guys are like, what the heck is this? Uh, this is the character's back right here. So you can imagine there's a scapula, a scapula right here, shoulder blades, right? Uh, the spine bends a little bit this way like that. You got the 10th rib going here, body stretches, pelvic bone. There you go. Make sense. Let me know in the chat. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps you Two two boxes, two boxes right there. Um, yeah, the sexy clavicle on top. Uh, for some reason, boxes as guidelines aren't for me. I like to draw the contour lines more than things will go from there. And that's fine. I mean, again, right? I always tell people there are so many different ways to draw. Um, so many different ways to draw your characters, whether you do boxes, whether you do more spherical stuff. And I always tell people that sometimes there are use cases where things are better than than others, right? I've gotten this question all the time where people are like, hey, Sam, I keep trying to do the mannequin technique, but for some reason, my characters look too stiff. And the answer to that question is, hey, what do you expect? Because the mannequin technique is supposed to make your characters look stiff. It's supposed to give your characters structure and rigidity and volume. And so if you're expecting it to not do that, 
you're, you, you're not using that structure correctly, right? If you're looking for more of a flow and more of an organic feel, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use more gestural lines. You're going to want to use more of the cross contours, more of the volume and stuff. And so different techniques will have different use cases. Um, personally, whenever I'm drawing something that's a little bit more dynamic and stuff, I don't use boxes. I don't use mannequins. I use more gesture, right? So if I'm drawing something for myself, um, here's an example. Maybe I'll draw, I'll draw a character. Uh, let me think here. I'll draw a character kind of crouched like this. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do more of a rough gesture, right? Here's the, here's that rib cage. Maybe the pelvis is like this. Um, and then maybe I'll have the knees going this way, right? The legs going here, and then I'll have uh, this knee maybe going a little bit more forward like this. Like the character is like squatting or something like that, doing that, doing that Asian squat, right? Um, and so for the stuff like this, I'm keeping it nice and loose, right? Keeping that gesture of the, uh, more of the focus there, right? So I'm not really using the, the, the structure of the boxes and the mannequin and stuff. But if you're doing something like, let's say, in perspective, then I think with perspective, it's more important, I think, to, or it's not more important, but it's easier to use stuff like boxes because those boxes inherently, naturally have perspective in them, right? It's easier to define a perspective of a box than it is to define a perspective of the sphere, right? Like the sphere is so ambiguous. This could be your uh, center line. This could be your center line. This could technically be your center line. And so I personally think if you're going to do stuff in perspective, boxes are easier. But if you're going to be doing more gestural dynamic stuff or whatever, um, then maybe boxes might not be the, the solution you're going for. Right? So hopefully, hopefully that, that makes sense. And, and again, I think it's a great call out because I think I hear this question all the time where it's like, I don't really like this technique or I, I, I much prefer this or for whenever I try to do that technique, it never turns out right. And it's maybe because that technique is, you know, used for something else, right? Um, so yeah, again, I think it's it's great. There's no rules. Have fun. Explore explore what makes the most sense to you. And uh, yeah, and sometimes you know, like I used to not like drawing the box technique. The reason why I tell you guys, like, yeah, maybe some of you guys might feel a little like, oh man, my stuff looks stiff, is because that's how I felt, right? That's how I felt when I tried doing this box technique when I was younger, when I was first starting out with art. I, w I never understood it because I always felt like my characters felt too robotic. They felt too stiff. Um, they didn't look like the Naruto characters that I wanted to draw. And I never understood why. And I realized it's because, you know, this technique is used for other things. Um, let's see here. Some people use boxes, some use beans, contours, etc. It always comes down to what you find effective when you're studying. Exactly. 100%. Um, but let's go talk about the leg anatomy here because I think the leg anatomy is really fun. Um, so here we go. All right, let's go talk about some of the leg stuff here. So you can't really see the knee here or actually, hmm. Let's go do this leg first. I was going to say you can't really see the knee, but we can actually do this leg here. So let's go ahead and do um, this leg on the side right here. And we'll talk a little bit about the anatomy that we're seeing um, of, of this leg. All right. So starting off here with the upper body, we can't really see, or sorry, the upper leg here. Unfortunately, we can't really see a lot of the connections onto the pelvis. And so I'm not going to talk too much about that, but I will mention a few things, a few notable things that I think will be helpful. Uh, one of the, one of the more notable things here is to realize that the pelvis is going to be a major connection there for the legs. Um, and there's going to be a couple of things to call out. On the front side of the legs there, you're going to have um, the tensor fascia latte, the TFL, connecting there on the side of the ACES, which is known as the anterior superior iliac spine. Um, these are going to help create a little bit of a tapering in the legs. Uh, you're not going to see it again, so I'm not going to go over too much. But from what you can see in this, in this section right here, um, what you are going to get a lot of is going to be the interior muscles there. So the abductor muscles or adductor, abductor, um, abductor muscles here on the inner side. And also I was going to shave this, but I don't like how it looks. Um, also you're going to have the hamstring muscles down below. So I'll go over those in a bit, but let me go like this and Yep. 
Here you go. <laughs> Easier. Easier to just go like that and, and shade this one out uh, that way. Cool. Um, yeah, let's go in here and let's talk a little bit about the, this leg right here because you can actually see the knee a little bit more. Do you save my line? I do save my line, Wes. Yes. Uh, thank you for the follows, guys. Kimchi, great name. Uh, Nobody2829, Oprah Head, uh, Void Walker. We also got uh, Neki131 and also Atreus. Welcome into the Kasem crew. I use this sort of rounded box. I can help with perspective, but in my hand, it's soft. So when doing gestures, I can stretch and squish. That's great. Yeah. Again, whatever works for you, right? Definitely works. How do you, um, how do you keep your patient with the slow drowning? I don't know. I don't know what that means. That sounds scary. <laughs> Thank you for the prime sub, Rudy. Appreciate that. But yeah, let's go talk about the, let's go talk about the knee here. All right. So here is what's going to go on with, uh, with the knee. So when it comes down to the actual structure here of uh, the knee, first of all, we're going to have the, the connections of the, um, of the quad muscles here. So I'm going to kind of add a little bit of form here just to kind of give it some volume. And the interesting thing is that the quad muscles, which are going to be connecting to the pelvis and all that stuff, these are actually going to kind of go in and work their way into the forms uh, let me go back right here. Well, work their way into the forms of, of the pelvis. And so I'm going to add a little bit of an overlap here just to kind of give it some depth, right? Uh, and then we're going to wrap its way all the way here. And let's talk mostly about the knee today, all right? <laughs> thank you for all the, thank you for all the support today. Damn. Appreciate all the subs. All right, so let's let's work on uh, let's work on this and this uh, knee right here. So there's a couple things going on here with the knee. All right, so the first thing here is you're gonna have this uh, pentag pentagonal pentagon shape right here, and this is gonna be known as the patella, also known as the kneecap. Now, what's interesting about the knee is that the knee is actually a joint. It's not one singular thing. So the knee is actually comprised of connections of the patella with stuff like the tibia bone, the femur as well. It's also going to have connections of the muscles of the quad muscles, as well as some of the intrinsic stuff and stuff like the uh, sartorius muscle. So this is something that I learned. I realized when I was studying anatomy that, hey, the knee is not just one singular thing. The knee is actually a, a, a series of things coming together to make this uh, joint that we have over here. So one of the things I like to do is I like to first establish the patella bone because that's going to be the most uh, prominent, right? That's going to be that kneecap that we have right here. Um, thank you for the prime sub two, Zura. Appreciate that. And thank you for four months. Uh, and thank you for the follows, Pearl of Wisdom and Amy, Amy CHSF. So let's go in. Let's gonna let, we're gonna lay out the uh, the kneecap there, and again we're gonna be utilizing those same techniques that I mentioned earlier about foreshortening, right? So first of all, let's kind of go in and figure out what's going on here with the leg. So we're gonna have some overlap right here because at this stage you're gonna have the hamstring muscles kind of inserting into the back of the knee right here, and so you're not really gonna see a lot of that volume. But instead, what we'll see here is I'll actually I'll actually raise it up a little bit higher. Um, instead, what we're going to see is we're going to see some of that tendon here as it connects down to the back there of the calf muscles, right? And here, we're going to have a few connections going in from the sartorius to the gracilla, all these muscles, but let's not worry about that. Instead, I'm going to simplify it as a general kind of muscle grouping here, all right? So you can imagine some of that there. Now, when it comes to the knee, the knee is going to have a couple of bony protrusions, but... I always tell people the main things to remember about the knee is that the knee actually has some fat pads right here. So there's a little fat pad right there. Um, and also a little bit on the other side too. So we're going to add a little bit of those fat pads there. And that's going to actually help kind of give it some of that shape. Okay. So hopefully I haven't lost you guys. I think arguably this might be one of the weirder, weirder ones to cover because it's such a weird angle. And so it's hard for me to demo all the muscle groups here. We're kind of, they're getting all basically overlapped 100%. Um, do you get your poses from Pinterest? Uh, no, I actually get these from DeviantArt. So shout out to DA. I used to be sponsored by them um, from part of the DA Collective. But let's go down all the way. So we're going to make our way down here. 
And one of the interesting things is that the knee actually connects to something called um, the tibial tuberosity, which is basically, I think it's a ligament or a tendon. I always forget the two. It's one of those two there, and it's going to basically connect to the tibia bone. Now, here's something fun about the tibia bone, and I'll, I'll explain it a little bit. So the tibia bone basically is this big bone of the leg right here, right? And the joint right here actually makes the inner ankle bone. So if you guys have never heard of the uh, kind of, you know, figuring out what that inner ankle bone there, that's actually comprised. Actually, no, sorry. That's comprised of your fibula. That's the inner side. Hold on. Give me a sec. Fibula is outer. Tibia is inner. Yeah. Okay. So this is the tibia. The fibula is on the outer side. So there's going to be that, uh, that ankle bone there. But the thing that's actually really interesting about this leg or about this, this uh, lower leg here is this. Okay. Look, this is going to sound sus. Okay. If you guys, if you guys reach, oh man, this is actually going to be sus. I might actually get banned for this. Okay. Look, look, I'm a pixelated, so it doesn't look as sus. But if you guys reach for your leg right now, okay, your lower leg, and if you, <laughs> okay, look, listen, listen, if you touch your lower leg, you're going to be finding a bony protrusion there. And some of you might know this as the shin bone, okay, the shin bone uh, for the leg. Now, the reason why this is important is because if you actually feel this bony protrusion of the lower leg there, you're going to realize that there's actually no muscle covering that section, hence why you feel it there being really hard, okay? Damn, that just sounds sus. Okay. But this can actually be this can actually be reflected in in the drawing here because what's going to happen right now is there's going to be no muscle, all right? There's going to be no muscle there on this portion of the bone right here and instead <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the 100 bits. Mods, get this man, man. The pixelation makes it more sus. You think so? I don't I think it helps, man. It makes it look more discreet, you know what I'm saying? Man, it's hard to see. <laughs> so, it's important because there's going to be no there's going to be no muscle there, right? And so, instead, what we can do is this, right? We can kind of bring this down here. We'll bring that we'll bring that tibial tuberosity to the to the tibia bone there. Uh, we're gonna add here some uh, some outer muscles. So this is gonna be the tibialis anterior uh, or anterior tibialis, I believe. Mm, wow, it's been a while since I've done this anatomy. Let me double check. Tibialis anterior. So that's gonna kind of go in here. It's gonna wrap into the inner portion there of the leg. And you can kind of start seeing here, now we're getting that leg structure, right? We're getting that common leg structure here, wrapping of the forms, a little bit of a tapering right here. And then from here on the inner side is where I'm gonna actually be denoting a, a little bit of the lines there. Now this right here um, on the back side of the leg is where the calf muscles are. And those are gonna be comprised of two muscles, the gastrocnemius and the uh, soleus muscle, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here is I'm adding in these subtle lines, right? I'm not, I'm not denoting everything, but just adding in a few subtle lines to showcase that, Hey, we know what's going on here. There's a little bit of a hard bone, right? Of the, of the tibia as it kind of goes there and creates the shape of the, uh, the shape of the ankle there, right? It's not just a simple, uh, simple transition. There is definitely a line there that kind of helps create and shape some of the form of the leg. You get what I'm saying? Protrusion and hard in one sentence? Yeah. Yeah, man. How do you keep your patience? Oh, okay. That's what you were asking. Okay. Earlier, I heard something about patience and drowning. How do you keep your patience with the drawing when it's going very slow? Um, I think, I think part of that is when realizing, <laughs> realizing that drawings are not necessarily fast right? And that a fast drawing doesn't necessarily mean it's a good drawing. I think, I think speed is something that happens naturally as we improve as artists. Um, you know, we, we develop these skills and each time we develop these skills, the better we'll be at producing the work that we want to produce. But I think it always, it's a matter of taking time to produce those things. And every time you do it, it gets better. So I think for me, whenever I draw, I'm not about speed. Now, obviously when I'm at work, yeah, there's going to be cases where it's like, okay, I need to, you know, I need to work faster, uh, that kind of thing. Right. But otherwise it's, for me, it's, it's less about speed and, and more about, um, more about getting something right and feeling good about that. And then every time I do it, I get a little bit faster right? 
a little bit faster, a little bit better, and then becomes easier. Okay, there you go. I'm going to give this more of a leg. Um, <laughs> I'm out of bits. <laughs> thank you, Vex. Uh, but thank you for the follows, guys. Uh, Ray, Masa, Mas, Masa, Ramusi, Mondo, uh, Cheesily, and everybody in here. Kind of a dev. Welcome in. Thank you, guys. I, I used to be a software engineer. I used to be a developer. So, cool name. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope that today's stream is helpful. And I hope that it's not too dense either. I'm always cautious about the anatomy because I, one, I feel like anatomy should never be the first thing that people try to learn. Um, and so if you're a beginner, don't worry about anatomy. Like that's honestly, I think one of the last things, not last things, but it should be like maybe one of the third, third or fourth things you should focus on. Right. Um, but two, I know that anatomy can get dense. And so, you know, I want to make sure I'm not like too heavy, um, with giving you guys too much crazy stuff here. Oh, do you stream too, Vex? I'll leave you a follow. I always try to follow um, fellow streamers and stuff, you know? Try to do my best. Okay, but let's kind of... Okay, I'm going to be quick about this because I know some of you guys get wild about toes. For some reason, every time I draw feet, literally, I want y'all to know, this character has feet, okay? So we're going to have to draw it. But every time I draw feet, people are always like, yo, Kaysom, you draw feet, bro? I can't believe you're a foot streamer. <sighs> I want to draw the feet guys. I'm not a foot streamer. Okay. And even if you guys like feet, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to roast your kink. All right. But I'm, I'm, I'm not a foot streamer. We're going to draw the feet because he has feet. All right. We're not going to, we're not going to neglect our responsibility here. All right. But I'm going to be quick with it. I know, I know some of you guys are hooligans in the chat. You're like, yo, I knew he was a foot streamer. Literally, I'm going to spend like two minutes, two minutes out of the 40 minutes or 40, uh, four hours of my stream. And already I can already see like, damn, this is a foot stream. All right. Case if it's okay if you enjoy drawing feet, we I'm, not, I, I, I'm literally just drawing feet for feet because he has feet. That's literally it. I'm going to draw it. You, you guys are trolling me. All right, here we go. Ready? This is how I draw feet, okay? First of all, I like to group the, the three main toes there. Uh, pinky toe can go kind of in the back right here. Uh, this is a bit of a foreshortened piece or a foreshortened, uh, foreshortened pose. So let me actually pull out that. Uh, we're going we're gonna to move the toes up a little bit here. And um, we're going to do some of that. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find... I'll show you guys really quick. How, it's, it's, it's kind of easy, actually. So you're going to go in here. You're going to define the big toe as a kind of like a step ladder. You're going to go one, two, uh, and then that's about it. One, two, buckle my shoe. Okay. So you can kind of imagine that's the big toe there. Uh, easy peasy. Let's put in um, a little bit of a curve there and a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of uh, a nail there for the, for the toe. Okay. All right. One, two, buckle my shoe. That's it. KSM, speed doesn't matter. Case when he draws feet, yo, damn, you're right. I'm really, I'm really getting roasted today. Now nah, you're right. You're right. Ah, <laughs> uh, now nah, you got me with that one. That's a, that's a fair one. It's not, it's, yeah. How can I say it's not about speed? And then let me be like, all right, let me, let's speed up on this drawing right here. Damn. Well played. Well played. All right, so I'm adding in the three toes here, adding in a little bit of overlap each time, right? Overlapping the toes, boom, boom, boom. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of depth here for the he um, for the portion up here of the foot before it kind of goes down and and bends into that uh, section of the foot there. Sometimes it's very, it's sloped for some people, sometimes it's not. Um, so it all depends on your on your preference. We're gonna go in here and kind of add a little bit of a of a curve of overlap there, so we have a little bit more of the ankle. Let me kind of erase some of this. Okay. And then let's go do that one final toe. And that's about it for uh, for feet. Okay. We don't got to do any more than this, guys. All right. We're moving on. We're moving on from, uh, from feet here because we're going to move on to the other part here, which, okay, which now that I think about it is literally the feet again. Damn. Back to back feet, huh? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> here we go. We're going to draw the other one. We're going to draw the other foot here. Again, we're just going to simplify it. Easy peasy. And then we'll move on to um, some hands. All right. What a coincidence. No, 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 no. It's not a, it's, it's actually a coincidence. All right. It's, it was actually just a pure coincidence that there was more. Look, humans have two feet, just like how humans have two hands. Um, here are some quick tips though. Uh, in, in all seriousness. Okay. Some quick tips, uh, when it comes to drawing feet, um, something that I always see that uh, a mistake that I see with a beginner artist is when you're drawing the ankles, Keep in mind here that the ankle actually has a, the ankles kind of go at an angle. So the inner ankle is always going to be a little bit higher than the lower ankle. And that's just kind of how the tibia works there. And the fibula sits a little bit lower. So if you're drawing the ankles, make sure you're drawing there a little bit of an angle, right? A little bit of an angle there for your, uh, for your ankle. Uh, other things to call out, I would say are going to be the, um, similarly, the the calf muscles the inner calf actually is a little bit lower than the upper calf so what is that what does that actually look like so let me go ahead first and kind of clean all of this stuff up but basically if you were to draw kind of the contour here this inner calf is going to kind of round out a little bit lower here and the upper calf is usually a little bit thinner um, and kind of has more of a taper as it kind of works its way down into the leg uh, right here Okay. Um, here we'll add a little bit of a gesture as well for the, uh, for the tibia bone that we talked about earlier. So again, we talked about how the tibia there really, d um, doesn't have any, any muscle. And so because of that, you're sometimes going to see kind of a gestural flow as the, as the leg makes its way down there right here. And then maybe we'll add like a line right here for, um, for the leg. Okay. And then let's kind of work on the foot right here. And then I think we'll be good. See, easy peasy. Uh, then you have to follow Jasmanian and uh, Art Viché. Yes, humans have, I believe, as far as I know, humans have at most two feet. Okay. Some, some have less. I, I don't know anyone who has more than two. All right, so now we're going to go in uh, for this one. We're going to do the same technique, but now it's going to be foreshortened. So we're going to go in and apply some of that, the ridge right here. Boom, boom, boom. A uh, little bit of the nail right here, right? So some of that volume uh, like so. There you go. Uh, then we're going to add in here the smaller, uh, the grouping of three toes. So I always group them up into three like this, like that. Uh, and then from there, we're going to just work on adding in the, the structure. So we're going to go boom like that one, two buckle my shoe. And then last but not least, that pinky toe kind of goes further back, uh, further back in there. Okay. And with that, that's kind of it. That's kind of it for, um, for the leg. Now, again, you can do this as detailed as you want or as, um, as simplified as you want. You don't have to go in and add all the little details, right? But I always think that it's really up to your style and your preference for what you want to go for. Let me, let me go ahead here and kind of fix up. I want to kind of fix this leg real quick, bring that back, give us more of a heel. And then let me, let me move this leg out just a tad bit too. Okay. There you go. Um, nice toe, the grippers. I know the grippers, uh, what brush am I using? So I actually have, uh, my own brushes that I use. So you guys can go ahead and, and uh, download those if you guys are looking for a little something, something right there.
Okay, let me shrink this down a bit. And then I think with that, we basically should be good um, for the for the for the drawings today. I guess we do have the hands. I can draw the hands really quick, and then from there we'll move on to. Um, from there we'll move on to the other pose because I think the other pose is for me what's going to be more interesting. Cool. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Are you guys back from the ad break, by the way? I know I, I run ads on my stream every hour, uh, and then one ran just a bit earlier there. Hopefully you guys are all right, still okay from, from the ad break and stuff. Let me know if, uh, you guys are back. Should be, hopefully. Okay, really quick for hands. Um, I'll just do this really quickly. All right, so we're going to do one here for the pinky. Boom. Uh, we'll group up here the two fingers for the uh, for the middle finger and the ring finger there. And then last but not least, we have that other finger there. Uh, and then from there, we're going to just add in some contour or some contour lines here for the knuckles, right? There you go. Hands there. Get rid of this line right here. Um, and then we'll do, maybe I'll do like a little line right here just to denote a bit of a gap between the two fingers. Kind of like that. Maybe I'll put it here actually. Again, this is just a rough study. Obviously, if I wanted to clean it up, we would, you know, put some more polish into it and stuff. Um, and thank you. Thank you for the follows today, guys. Invaders and Cle Clement Theo. I do have a YouTube channel and stuff. Um, since you did the two box tip for torso, do you also have a quicker way for the legs? Um, actually, yeah. And that all comes down to proportions and, and the uh, general anatomy. But, hmm, I'm trying to think if there's a... Like, I can tell you guys, but I don't have a... I guess we can do it really quick. I can show you guys really quick. One second. Okay. All right, I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, again, I'm trying not to spend too much time on this section. So let's just leave it at that. Palms here, pinky grouped in, and then I'll simplify the, the hands and stuff. There you go. Cool, cool, cool. So this is our this is our drawing of uh, this guy right here, and I think it looks pretty decent in terms of at least what we were trying to go for. Um, I'll show you guys the before and after in a quick second. So here is the the general structure that we had, and here's the anatomy that we placed on top, right? So again, it's it's really comes down to oftentimes just kind of establishing some of the basic forms there, and and from those basic forms. I actually forgot to add the leg here. This is kind of why this por this portion was missing. I was like, what's going on? Um, so right here, you have that lower leg uh, kind of going down this way. And then here, that leg is going to kind of wrap around right here. So let's go do that really quick. Shoop, shoop, shoop. And let's bring that more in. Um, how does it feel to be good at things? Um, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I feel like at this stage in my career, I feel like there's always something to improve on. And so 
I think it feels good that I have a general understanding of stuff. Yeah, that, that definitely feels good. But I always think that, you know, there's so much more to learn, so much more to practice. And so I, I can't ease up, right? I can't, I can't just stop. Kind of have to keep going and practicing more and more. Always, always stay hungry. If that's, if that's what you're going for. I think there are some people who are like, you know what? I'm happy with my style. And I think this is, uh, this is where I want to be with my art. And I think that's completely fine, right? Not, you know, not everything has to be about like grinding and, and, you know, trying to achieve a particular goal every year. Sometimes you're happy with where you are with your art. And I think that's okay. Um, just wanted to say thanks for the stream today. I'm working on some figure drawings. And this has been helpful. Oh, nice. That's super awesome. Okay. But there you go. We, I think finished this one right here from, Again, starting off with that mannequin shape and really just type slowly building out that, that structure, um, structure for this character that we have here. Let me go in like this. Change that up. And uh, yeah, that was our, uh, our our original reference was over there on the on the left side there, which some of you might not have seen because you came in a little bit later. All righty, let's do, let's do this one right here. I think this is a fun one and I feel like we should definitely tackle it today. All right, so we'll start from the beginning and then from there we'll work on, um, we'll work on building it out and stuff. Do you always use this mannequin when drawing figures or is this just for tech teaching purposes right now? Um, I use it for perspective. So we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier where um, we talked about the different cases and use cases of different approaches for drawing characters and figures and stuff. I would say um, when you're drawing characters in perspective, I feel like one of the easiest things you can do is giving your characters a mannequin structure, simplified forms, because it's a lot easier to, to understand the perspective of a, of a box than it is to understand the perspective of an organic rib cage, right? Um, so it depends. But sometimes if I'm doing, for example, like at work, if I'm doing kind of like character animations of uh, close-up shots and more about the expression and the energy, I'm less focused about perspective and kind of getting that down and more focused on the feel and the emotion and the energy of the character, in which case I'll be using more gestural forms and stuff to kind of convey that motion, right? So if I want to, for example, draw a character uh, rotating their head, uh, for example, like maybe they're going to go from here and they're rotating their head to look at the camera. So let's say they're they're this way and they're looking here, right? And then I want them to look over here like this. You get what I'm saying? Then we might, then we might be using less boxes and more about the overall flow and uh, gesture. Like, okay, how does this head look like? Turn this head here, that kind of thing. So it depends. It really does depend. I do think it's good though, from an educational standpoint as well, to go over uh, using these boxes because I think more often than not, the boxes is really the bread and butter here, right? The anatomy and stuff that I did on top, that's that happens later. Okay. Good question. Um, the leg tip. Hmm. I think I'll say the leg tip for another day, but basically the the idea here for the leg is if you draw a character, the human body, let's say, right? Here's some general advice. The halfway mark of the human body when I, when you have a character right here. Uh, kind of like this. The halfway mark right here is going to be the something called um, the greater trochanter. That is where the uh, the bone there of the of the femur kind of connects. That's the halfway mark right here. Half, one half, right here. One half. Um, if you take this one half right here and you find this one half right here from there to there, this will actually be where that femur connects and where you're going to have that kneecap right here. So the bottom of the knee there, all the way down to the uh, tibia and the fibula and all of that stuff, 
and you ha you have the foot, that's going to be one half. So from from uh, greater trochanter to base of the knee, uh, from from the bottom there to the heel of the foot, that's usually going to be one half. And so if you're drawing a character like this, even in perspective, you can kind of line it up, make that triangle shape there, understand the form, right? You see that? And it should be roughly equidistant. So you can kind of see how already, boom, look at that. <whistles> Pretty good. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a, a quick overview. Obviously, it's a little bit more, there's a lot more nuance to it, and we can definitely go over that another day. But a quick little quick little tip there for drawing the legs in simplified proportions would be something uh, like that. All right, so I think to make this pose a little bit easier, let's go first and kind of find that eye level. And so I'm going to rotate this one a little bit here. And so that way we're going to be finding the eye level of the illustration, right? So it's going to be looking like this. And so for those of you who maybe missed the beginning of my stream, I'll be going over this one again from the beginning. And we'll start from the horizon line, work our way up to understanding some of the primitive shapes. And then from there, we'll work on actually drawing out the illustration and all that stuff. All right. Um, thank you for the follows, Moon Art Mom. Um, it's Bear River, Cle uh, Clement, Theo, and everybody here. Welcome in. There's a lot of you guys here right now, so I guess I'll do another intro. I'm trying to do it like every... I'm trying to space them out, you know, so that way people are not like, yo, he has so many intros. <laughs> so here's a, little, um, here's a little intro about me for those of you who are new here, if it's your first time. Uh, welcome in to the KSM crew. My name is Kasem. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch, and I teach everything from anatomy, perspective, gesture, clothing design to character design. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, currently, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, or you're looking just to hang out with my dog, who's actually right here on this side. Um, do leave a follow, join in, and I hope you guys enjoy today's stream. If you guys are watching in from YouTube, shout out to my YouTube gang. Um, if you're watching this as a VOD and stuff. But yeah, um, I, so for context, I basically have two jobs. I, I stream art on Twitch here and I teach art here on my free time. And then I do studio work um, on my regular good old regular nine to five job but yeah but i like it i like streaming on twitch this is honestly one of my one of the things i look forward to every day and why i wake up <laughs> why i wake up as early as i do because it's i don't know i think it's very fun and and and, and rewarding Okay, um, so I'm establishing here how I want the perspective to be, and I'm just going to use, I would say if the, eye, if the horizon line is kind of at this low level right here, let's kind of raise this one up a little bit higher. And again, my goal here isn't to try to match the, uh, match the reference exactly. I'm more interested in just getting the overall idea of the, of the reference, and then from there, you know, we're going to work our way in establishing the forms of our own character. But we're using that reference there as a general guideline. We're not actually trying to copy it. That's not the goal. Um, if your studio job is the typical nine to five, and if so, how do you stream around that so often? Ah, that's a great question. So the answer to that question is I basically wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning every day. I walk my dog and all of that stuff. And then from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., I'm usually drawing uh, either for you guys live on stream or if I'm drawing uh, freelance stuff or just whatever have you. And then from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is my 9 to 5 shifted, that's when I do studio work. So from 11 to 7, I do all that. And then, I, um, and then after that, I eat dinner, check out, play video games, play League of Legends, you know. And that's kind of my routine. So I draw for about 12 hours almost every day on weekdays or every day on weekdays, I draw for 12 hours on weekends. I only draw for about four, four hours on the weekends, four or five hours. I try to keep my weekends relatively free. So usually after 12 o'clock on weekends, I don't do any drawing. I just, you know, take a break and stuff. But yeah, that's kind of my, that's kind of my routine. Yeah. Did that make sense? 
<laughs> I just threw a bunch of numbers. I was like seven, 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 eleven, 11, seven, 11 to 10 to 10 to five, whatever. Yeah. But that's me. But here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to simplify. So let's actually talk about how to simplify shapes and stuff in perspective. Because I think this is actually an easy, fun technique you can do. So you can see, for example, that this reference image that we have here, it's pretty complicated, right? There's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of detail going on here with this with this character or not this character this scene and so sometimes one of the things to do is you can actually simplify it out first so before we even jump into drawing all of the uh the details of this chair and the stool let's actually just simplify it down to a a rectangular form now again as i mentioned at the beginning of the stream when it comes to learning perspective What's actually the most important thing is not going to be all the one point, two point vanishing points, all of that stuff. The most important thing to learn, especially as a fundamental of perspective, is actually going to be the horizon line. Because if you can master the horizon line, you can understand both vertical and horizontal depth. You can then be able to create uh, vanishing points of however you like. Um, and I think overall, it's going to also help you with composition. So I think mastering how the horizon line works, which is again, the eye level, right? So it's what the viewer sees at eye level is going to be, I think one of the most important things here. Um, so here's a simplified vo uh, form of this, uh, stool, I guess that, that, that they're sitting on. If you wanted to complicate it further and kind of give it more of that structure, we can actually go in now and, and carve out that stool uh, from what we have here. So I, I was originally just going to draw the stool out, but I realized that it might be beneficial for some of you to see, uh, to see here me drawing out this whole thing. Now, other things to call out too is um, some things you can do is practice drawing boxes. I think there's a um, there's a website called Drawbox, which is literally all about drawing boxes and stuff. Um, but you can use this kind of idea to kind of just simply draw out a box. And again, it's not about perfection. So I'm not trying to get this a perfect, uh, a perfect replica here, but I'm going to try my best to get at least some sort of remblance or semblance. Okay. But yeah, out of curiosity, how many of you guys in the chat, put an app in the chat if you struggle with perspective? Because, I don't know, actually, I'm trying to think if I should do another demo with you guys or if you guys are, like, good for now. Are you guys chilling today? We got a, we got a lot of chill viewers today. We're like, perspective? Easy. Never had a stress about that in my life. Put an app in the chat if, you, if you've been like, yeah, perspective is a little, a little complicated But you can kind of see what I'm doing right now is I'm again just moving some of those forms but I'm staying within the bounds of this box uh, that we've established here. So I'm not honestly I don't think I'm really doing too much crazy stuff right now. I'm just taking that box and I'm kind of carving out here all the underlying structure uh, that existed for this like stool that we have here on the side right. So taking all this form we're breaking out the legs there we're going to do the same thing on the other side and i'm keeping it nice and simple nothing too hopefully not too complicated I mean, let me see damn that's a lot of f's sheesh um semblance resemblance remblance <laughs> trying to cut the corners blints i'm just gonna say blints next time um you struggle, uh, let's see here. You're struggling to draw this damn chair. Again, the chair, the chair is complicated, but look at kind of how I'm, I'm showing you guys right here. If you start off with a basic box, right? If you can draw the box, basically the, the rest of that chair really just comes down to establishing the rest of that structure. So that's kind of what we're doing right now, right? Draw the box first, because if you can draw the box, the rest of this is really just carving out all the little details that we have here. So look at that. We already now have uh, a nice little stool, right? So honestly, I probably just should have kept it as a box, but I'm, I don't know. I wanted to show you guys at least this part to give you an idea. give you an idea of how I, um, how I generally approach 
perspective and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but with that being said, let's go in here and start working on the scene now because I think we're, I think we're good. I think we've got here again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And if, if you want it to be perfect, we can talk about that. Uh, we can talk about how you can lay out the structure, line up these lines exactly how you want them to line up the angle there to make sure that the angle is tilting the way that you want it to line up. But we're not worried about that today, right? So there's that's like a whole lot of methodology for getting good industrial design um, for your illustrations, but we're not focusing on industrial design today. Uh, let's see here. How's it going, Wes? Welcome back in. I struggle on which method to use when simplifying poses. Hmm. A good a good question that we we actually talked about earlier, where I think. Again, a lot of methodology is is very much dependent on one, what you feel makes the most sense to you. So there's no right or wrong way. Um, but two, I also think it's it's also dependent on, um, also very much dependent on the, the, the use case, right? So are you trying to draw something that has a little bit more of a complex form and perspective, in which case it might be better to focus on laying out uh, what's it called? Laying out boxes and stuff and a mannequin, or is your form is your illustration more focused on form or not form? Uh, more focused on gesture and more focused on the energy. In which case, it might be better to to focus on something using more kind of contour lines and gestural flow and stuff like that. So, I think it does depend personally, but. Yeah. Anyways, this is the little box that we got here. All right. We're going to get into the drawing here of this one now that we've established our general structure. And the main reason why we're even focusing on drawing this, um, this stool and stuff is because I always tell you guys that if you want to get good, um, kind of a good illustration going, you really want to make sure that you have the the structure is that the character is going for. Um, if you're, if you're talking about perspective and all that stuff, right? So we have here all of this, uh, let me, I want to make sure it's at least somewhat. Okay. That's close enough to me for eyeballing, at least for eyeballing the perspective of this one. Okay, cool. So let's go in here and let's talk about the, the, the people now, all right? So I'm going to lower the opacity so we can kind of put that in the, the background there. Where are the sexy clavicles on the table? If you look closely, you squint a little, you'll see them. They're hidden behind the two legs, all right? Between the two legs of this chair. All right. <laughs> you guys are wild. Uh, okay, let's, let's talk about it. So again, when it comes to drawing uh, characters in a scene like this, the most important thing for me is always thinking about the contact points. Right. So here I'm going to be drawing this guy first. But what I want to focus on primarily is establishing the contact point there of the pelvis on this uh, on this chair or the stool that they're sitting on. So by establishing that first, you're going to get a good feel for the volume there. And then from there, let's kind of draw in that rib cage using some of the techniques I've mentioned to you guys earlier about proportion and form. Right. And so we're going to lay that out next. And here we've already have a good kind of uh understanding there of that box in perspective, right? He's doing a little bit of a twist. So let's actually maybe exaggerate this a little bit more. I'm going to take this and let's see if we can rotate it a little bit. Going like that. So now we have that center line going in like this. And so already we've kind of built out a little bit of a structure, right? A little bit of a form there. Um, Thank you for the fall of death size. And also, uh, welcome back in. Aloha, Lola, or Alpha Lola, Aloha. And also, Rat Lord. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back in. How's my favorite rat? Today, we're actually talking about 3D form and perspective and stuff. So I feel like my 3D, my 3D modelers in the chat would appreciate this stream. You guys, you guys know all about form and, and volume and understanding all that stuff. So I think, honestly, I feel like I would be really good at 3D modeling. I'm just too lazy to learn the tools. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I feel like I would actually be pretty decent at it since I already think of things in a three-dimensional way. Um, but yeah, let's go back in here now. And let, now that we've established, again, the we've established all the, the, the basic forms, this is where you can kind of go in now and let's just say, all right, let's go add in some of the joints, right? So let's go here. We're going to bring this arm up a little bit. And then let's kind of talk about the legs. So you can kind of see here how the leg, the knee is going to kind of go here. And we want to make sure to match a little bit of the proportion that we're working with. But I'm going to focus on establishing that knee first in the foreground. And then everything else, like the, the volume here of the quads and that upper leg muscle, we're going to just simplify that now as a rounded form of a cylinder. So we're going to go in here, boom, 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 rounded form of the cylinder. And I'll actually bring that pelvis back just a tad bit. Um, let's see here. And hey, Lady Stoneheart, welcome in. Glad to have you on here. Do you think your art would be bad if you didn't use 3D forms? Mm, no. Um, again, you don't have to use 3D forms when you're drawing. Um, but I think that 3D forms are really good for really understanding what's going on, especially if you're still a beginner and you feel like you are, you know, still trying to grasp what the heck is going on with the body. I think it's a lot easier to understand a cylinder then to understand the tibia, fibula, um, the anterior, you know, uh, tibialis and all those muscles, right? Personally, I think so. I think it's easier to understand a box than to understand the 12 sets of ribs on the rib cage and the sternum and how the pectoral muscles connect and insert and all that stuff. So I think personally, the forms are good and good to learn but you don't have to um you know when you're drawing everything you don't have to draw everything out as a um as a box or whatever but here's the again here's these structures that we're going to do and here's what we're going to do uh i'm going to also use the perspective that we have here again i'm using less i want to use this reference less and we're kind of just using it as a general guideline but i'm not too worried about the reference as much i care more about the overall scene itself and kind of capturing the energy of the scene that we have here, right? Uh, do you think 3D forms translate into animation as well? Oh, yeah, 100%. Definitely. Here's the thing. More than, more than anything, more than an illustration, actually, because at the end of the day, when it comes to animation, what you're doing with animation is when you are drawing something, you're making it come to life, right? You're giving, you're giving the, the characters that you have motion, and to really give motion and have them interact in the world that they're in, you need to actually have really good understanding of the 3D forms because you can imagine your character is not going to be facing straight away every time, right? Even, for example, The Simpsons, there's going to be different faces for the character, right? There's going to be when the character looks this way, right? There's going to be where the character is looking straight ahead at you. Then there's going to be a three-fourths view, and these are just random ugly smiley faces, but you guys get the point, right? So understanding that, to really get a good grasp of that, you need to actually learn some, some basics of 3D form to be able to draw your characters three-dimensionally in the space that they're in. Uh, once you pledge to the box legion, you never <laughs> escape it. Are you a box brethren, or are you a sphere sphere user. Ooh. I use, again, I use both. So I'm not saying like, Hey, you, you can only use boxes. Boxes are the only way. I think there are very, there are use cases for either or, uh, that I think makes it easier to do something than, than, than the other. So here, notice how I'm going to be using the legs here, right? I'm using the legs as a general kind of guideline to establish some of that perspective um, as well, right? Now, obviously, the leg here is going to be covered by the stool, so we're going to get rid of some of these lines here. But uh, there you go. Look at that. See? Perspective. Not that hard. Use both, but all hail the triangle. Yeah, true, true KSM fans use the triangle. <laughs> the real KSM, the OGs have been here long enough. This is the, the, the triangle technique is, is the most superior. Spheres? 
Squares? Nah, triangles. Triangles all day, baby. Um, I've been drawing for many years, but there's always room to improve. 100%. I agree with that for sure. Um, but yeah, welcome in, Lady Stoneheart. Appreciate you coming in here. Uh, do you do color and environment study despite the fact that you are character design? The <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. That's actually a good question. Um, I don't do it because exactly what you said, because in character design, usually somebody does do the colors and stuff for you. And uh, yeah, because of that, I oftentimes do not focus too much on practicing those other aspects not to say that you shouldn't um, and i think there's definitely going to be a point where i will look into those things more but right now it's not something that i i feel like i need yo how's it going brad welcome back in k sen senpai k k say k k say sen sem shush uh thank you for the follows welcome in guys k sem is like the avatar master of all guidelines true we do like guidelines here and i like i like uh, how there's so many different types that you can go with right there's no there's no right or wrong well there's there's some better options than others okay uh, but there you go. We've got all of this. I'm going to lower that knee down just a bit, actually. I think I want to make it feel a little bit more dramatic. So I kind of want him to kind of buckle his knee, uh, raise that down a bit there. And so again, this is just a fun exercise of getting familiar with the forms, getting familiar with the perspective. And I think that by doing these, these kind of exercises, you can really start to get a more Com you can get really more comfortable with drawing the human body. Um, and uh, we can go from all of this mannequin stuff to the more anatomical stuff that we did earlier today. Right. How can I get your art on Instagram? Um, I have a link to my Instagram. Thanks for dropping it. Everything was peaceful until the perspective nation attacked. Damn. True. I'm a big, I, I love perspective. Personally, I think perspective is is um is a fundamental that sometimes a lot of people neglect because they think like, oh, I'm gonna draw my anime characters. I don't need perspective. Perspective is for buildings and stuff. But if you you actually realize that when you draw faces, which I'll show you guys a few examples of faces that we've drawn. Um, so here are some faces that I did, but here's some stuff that we've actually done. But perspective is actually in everything that you draw especially in faces and understanding perspective, general perspective can really level up your faces to make it go from something that feels flat to something that actually has more depth, more volume and stuff like that. So here are some more faces that I've drawn um, for you guys, right? So the more you understand perspective, the better off you'll actually be. So underrated, 100% underrated, but yeah. Um, let's see here. Major stream spent all morning running around for last minute V day. Oh shoot, Valentine's Day, dude. I've I've uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. I need to think about something to do for Valentine's Day. Yeesh. Um, I got no plans. Uh, but yeah. Uh, welcome back in. Uh, Goodwill. Thank you for the follows, guys. Leo Arts Box. Uh, Kevin Emil. Not too sh uh, not too schlebby. Thank you for the follows. Welcome into the case and crew. Eventually, KSMR training book will drop. Got to add it to the collection. Yes, actually, it will. Um, that's not even a joke. If you guys didn't know, by the way, I actually have free resources on my Discord channel, which everybody can grab. It's free to grab. Um, here's today's worksheet that you can follow along with. Here is a cheat sheet that I made, which actually covers the fundamentals of form, perspective, and some foreshortening. Uh, this will this will be turned into a digital art book. That's one of my goals for this year is to make a digital art book. And then here's a cheat sheet from Andrew Loomis's uh, Forms and Perspective, a compilation of just some of his stuff there. So these are free to grab, guys. Make sure you grab them. They're under the art resources on my Discord channel. But keep in mind that these will be gone at the end of stream. Actually, for some reason, I didn't even get rid of these, so... Technically, you can even grab some of these, but I'm going to delete them now. <laughs> Yoinks, grab them now. I'm delete. I'm literally deleting the old ones. I forgot to delete them over the weekend. Look. Oh, my gosh. They're getting removed. Some of y'all might be fast, though. 
but otherwise these are free to grab guys so make sure you grab these one from these from today all right there you go but every stream i'm out here i always give you guys something to, to download and and stuff thank you for the follows kenpai appreciate that in a picture the pov is fixed and the vanishing points don't move how does it work in animation when the pov moves do the vanishing points move too yes Vanishing points move because again, this is this goes back to the beginning of uh, what we talked about for perspective. Perspective is dictated not necessarily by the vanishing points, but by the horizon line, right? And what is it? What is the horizon line? Well, the horizon line is basically the eye level. It is where the character's eye level is. So it's where the camera is. So you can imagine in an in an animated scene where the where the person is moving around or the camera is moving around, what's going to happen? The eye level. The horizon line is also going to move around too. And so as long as you understand where the camera is moving and where the eye level is, you too can also alter and change the uh, the perspective and the vanishing points because the vanishing points line up on that horizon line. So that's kind of what I'll say about that. Uh, this is why I always tell you guys when it comes down to uh, when it comes down to learning perspective, don't worry too much about vanishing points and stuff worry and learn more about the the fundamentals of the horizon line i think that's the most important thing when it comes to uh when it comes to learning perspective okay uh i'm gonna move it like this but there you go we drew out this guy right here hopefully this was a hopefully this demo uh seeing this guy kind of how i would work on this character here Hopefully that makes sense seeing it now. This is uh this was definitely a challenging one uh, for sure. I think this character or this this kind of reference and stuff is a pretty complicated one. And so if you guys are not like super familiar with the techniques of simplifying form and stuff, this one might be a doozy. But again, you know, give it a try, see what you know and what you don't know and where you're struggling with, and then go back in and try to practice uh, practice those things a little bit more. Let's see. All jokes aside, Kasem is so right. The longer you wait to learn perspective and hands, the longer it'll take. And the both are so big and adding interest to a piece. Oh, yeah. Thanks for all the follows today, guys. Uh, does drawing the examples help or should you always try to apply the principles to a new model drawing? Mm, I think that's up to you. I think I have found success in doing both. Um, it's kind of like when you draw, when you're drawing, like let's say let's say you're watching me, right? And you And you draw the way that I'm drawing it and stuff. I think it'll help you to kind of retain the stuff that I'm talking about. But I think if you really want to get the most out of your practice, I would say to also try to do it yourself. So find a reference picture, take a reference picture or whatever, and try to explore that yourself and see if you can um, try to reproduce whatever it was that we, uh, that we talked about today, right? Because sometimes, right, and I think we've talked about this before, but like sometimes you watch something and you think you understand what's going on, but the moment you try to do it yourself and you're kind of like, oh, whoa, I thought I knew, I thought I knew what was going on, right? Like you watch, you ever watch a YouTube video and you think you know what's going on with the video? You're like, oh yeah, I, I totally get this. It all makes sense. And the moment you try to do anything that you saw from the video and you're like, damn, uh, Hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute. I thought I knew what was going on here, right? That happens way too often. Um, but thank you for the follows, guys. Klaus Rede, Sketch for Fun, uh, Sig Rar, uh, Joey Silva. So many follows today. I feel like you guys might be bots. So hold on. I think we need to do a little something here. Let me pause the music. Okay, look. First of all, thank you for all the follows today. I really do appreciate them. But statistically speaking, whenever we get a lot of follows like this, there is a one out of five chance that one of you following right now on the stream, you might actually be a bot. All right. You might, you might be a bot. I don't know who you, maybe no one is, but we're going to do a quick bot check right now where all you got to do is type. I'm a bot in the chat. Okay. Type. I'm a bot in the chat. And the last person to type it, might actually be a bot. Now you might be wondering, KSM, well, well, why do we type them a bot? Here's the reason why, okay? Algorithmically, the program of an AI, they can't type I'm a bot. It's against their code. It's against the program. So a real bot can't type I'm a bot. You know what I'm saying? What do they say? They say, I'm, I'm not a bot, right? So everybody in chat type, I'm a bot, all right? Look at this, see? I told you, I'm a not a bot. 
smells like bot activity. James, I'm watching you, James. Every time I'm about in the chat, perfect. Let me just scroll through here. Okay, good, good. I'm scrolling through. All right, perfect, guys. There you go. All right, let me just go ahead, guys, and screenshot all of this, and I will uh, make sure... I'm gonna make sure here to uh, send this over to Twitch. Okay, get all you guys out here screenshotted. Perfect, perfect. And uh, expect to expect getting banned in like two days. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Welcome into the KSM crew. Uh, appreciate you guys coming in today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's stream, even if you guys are bots. Caught in 4K, easiest cleanup out here. Sheesh. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Welcome in, guys. Hopefully, you guys are chilling today no worries no even if you guys are bots uh thank you for all the follows <laughs> um but what were we talking about today so i guess also let me just introduce myself for those of you who are coming in because i know a lot of you guys just joined in uh right now uh but if you guys are new here welcome into the ksim crew my name is ksim i teach art on twitch everything from anatomy to perspective to uh all things related to character design and i also currently work uh, full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys have ever seen stuff like Castlevania, um, yeah, that's uh, currently where I work right now. And I also am prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. Uh, all all my favorites. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, and that's kind of what we do here. And then I stream on Twitch. Why is there? Why is the foot here? the heck um yeah and then i also uh yeah stream on twitch and stuff can you please link your art station i don't have an art station but here is my portfolio if you guys want to see my portfolio you guys can check this one out if you guys want to check out my instagram for more casual stuff you can check that out and if you uh want to check out my youtube channel you can also check that out too yeah, that's my uh, my little portfolio there. You guys can see the type of stuff that I do for for uh, more professional work, I guess. Yeah. All right, let me just finish um, highlighting this one, and then uh, and then we'll work on the next reference, which is the girl behind him. I think this is a fun one to work on because there's two characters interacting, which I always think is a little bit hard uh, to do in general because you have to not only think about the perspective of the character, but now you're adding the complexity of having that character actually interact with the character, with another character, and that's going to be, you're going to have to consider things like eye level, like are they looking at each other? Um, are the forms actually touching properly? Like, let's say, for example, here, she's holding on to him. And so now we have to consider this person as a contact point whenever we're drawing them now. So let's go ahead and, you know, do some of that too, right? It's a lot of interesting things here that we're going to be uh, looking at when drawing this girl uh, over here on the side. The art squad, yeah. Um, is being able to stream part of your work contract, if you can say? E no. Um, actually, yes, it is in my contract. Technically, I'm legally allowed to stream still and all that stuff. Obviously, I'm just not allowed to reveal anything that's related to the work I do for the studio. Um, but in the contract, it does say that I'm still allowed to be active on social media, um, you know, including things like YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitch and stuff like that. As long as I'm not revealing anything, because <laughs> if I do that, I kid you guys not, they will literally have my head. I will, man, NDA is crazy. They will, they will cancel me in a second. I will be gone. You're going to be like, hmm, I wonder what happened to that, that one streamer, Kasem. <laughs> he vanished. Um, what channel? Art Resource. Thank you, Vex. Appreciate that. Vex, I feel like you've just been joining Rune recently, but you already know. You already know where things are. Um, just got back from dance class. How are you doing? Hey, Tara, how's it going? Um, hopefully your class went well. We're doing well today. We're doing some fun, challenging uh, poses in perspective today. I think these are really fun to do. And I hope you guys have also been finding these enjoyable because I don't know. I think it's not often that we do poses in perspective. Usually when we're drawn on stream and stuff, you know, you know me, we're doing all these faces and stuff that you guys see, right? We've done a, we've done a few of these faces. Here's a few examples of stuff that we've done. Um, so we usually do a lot of those 
because that's, I would say, one of the best beginner things to work on, right? The the face and getting sure we get a good likeness for portraits and stuff. Um, but I don't know. I think stuff like this is really fun because if you can kind of figure all of this stuff out, I feel like you can really you can really start leveling up your art even more to make more interesting compositions. You can start to get a better understanding of, of your characters, all of that stuff. It's pretty, it's a good fundamental to learn. Actually, I want to bring, um, hmm, how should we do this? I think the hip is going to go more further out here like that. And then we're going to bring this knee right here. There you go. Um, when you're drawing something, are you cognizant of the initial line weight of your brush? Can you have too much, too little weight? Any other musings on the subject are also appreciated. Hmm. Am I cognizant? Um, kind of. Yeah, actually. Um, but that's something that I think it just kind of happens over time naturally. So what do I mean by that? Uh, whenever I'm drawing, uh, whenever I'm drawing something, here's a simple example. If I want to emphasize the importance of something, I'm going to use heavier line weight to make sure I to make sure I have nice kind of uh, thickness and kind of form there. And so a good example of that is when actually when I was drawing the forearm here with you guys earlier, I was showing you guys how I was, you know, adding in these thicker lines here for the outline and some of the overlaps. But when it comes to actually drawing in the components here of the muscles, like the ridge muscle here, uh, the extensor muscles here, and then of course the, um, this actually needs to go down, but um, the the flexor muscles down below, those are going to be at a lighter line weight because they're going to be interior, but also they're not going to be as prominent as sharp edges. So whenever I'm drawing, I'm always thinking about, you know, sharp versus or hard versus soft edges. I'm thinking about important versus not important details. I'm thinking about lighting versus shadow. I'm also thinking about uh, curved versus straight, transparent versus opaque when I'm doing my lines. And so... I know it sounds like a lot, but I think it's actually something that just kind of happens naturally as you draw more and you start developing your style, right? Um, thank you for the $5, by the way. Appreciate that tip. Uh, sketch for fun. Sketch for fun. That's a great name. Something that I struggled with for a very long time and why I, uh, what's it called? Why I quit doing art a long, long time ago. Because I didn't know how to sketch for fun. Um, but hopefully that answers your question. Um, SP lips. I think it's a it's a good question about like, do I need to be thinking about these things? I think it's good. Doesn't doesn't hurt to start thinking about these things. Um, but again, it's not something that I think. I think it's something that develops more over time as you start drawing more and and choosing some of the things that you want to emphasize. Uh, with your own illustration, right? Um, in the past, have you ever taken commissions? Yes. So in the past, that's kind of how I started by uh, getting into art and making money. I think when I when I was still thinking about whether or not I wanted to be an artist and whether or not I wanted to quit my software engineering job to uh, pursue this full time, one of the things that I think helped me uh, help me realize that I could maybe do art full time was that I was doing commission work and people were willing to commission me to do work. Um, and so I felt like, Hey, you know what? I can actually make some, some money from this. Maybe not a lot from commissions, but you know, not enough to, to, to pay the bills and all that stuff. But I think enough at least to start thinking about possibly doing it for a living. And so that was actually how I first kind of started doing art. Um, or making money from art was just doing one-off commissions for people, stuff like that. And then a little bit later, I, you know, started doing more freelance work, picking up like multi-month contracts and then starting to work on that stuff and realizing like, okay, this is actually where I can start making a living uh, from doing art. And then after, after all of that was when I eventually um, started doing more uh, studio work. And that was where I think I'm kind of where I'm at right now, where, I'm doing some studio work. I enjoy what I do, um, but I do sometimes like freelance stuff too. 
Uh, do you usually start with a simple shape figure when drawing character poses, or is it just for the, for our benefit? Um, so I guess the question you're asking is, is this how I draw regularly, right? Um, yes and no. <laughs> If I'm drawing a scene that's very complicated with perspective and form like this, which is like a very clear perspective shot, um, the answer is, yeah, this is probably how I'm going to draw because it just makes the most sense. Um, but if it's as if it's just like a general, like let's say a character, uh, let me see. Let's say if it's for work and something I've done in the past is like, let's say this character sheet, right? Um, if I'm drawing this character here, I'm not necessarily going to be drawing out boxes and cubes or whatever instead i'll probably just go in here and i'll go and draw out you know the the hold on uh, i'll draw out like okay let me draw out the the uh the, the rib cage right and let me kind of put that in here let me just lay out the clavicle let me put that in there let me go find that the shoulder there right the arms kind of flow that gesture out. And so if I'm just drawing like this and there's not really that much perspective going on and there's not much complexity going on, I probably won't use the boxes and stuff. And instead I'll kind of just do a rough outline like this just to kind of give me a, a general structure for the forms. And then from there, I'll go into actually adding in, you know, the details like, okay, cool. Let me add in here the, the pectoral muscles right there. Let me add in some more cleanliness here for the center line. You get what I'm saying? So I think it depends on the scene and the situation. But if it's just a standing pose like this, I'm probably not going to use boxes. But if it's something like this, like a very complex scene where there's very much a clear perspective going on um, and perspective is a big part of this scene, right? Because if you, if you did all this and the perspective looks off, it doesn't matter how much detail you put in. It's just not going to look good right? Like how many times guys put an F in the chat. If you've ever tried to draw a scene, right? You, maybe you drew a character in an environment or a scenery. And for some reason, no matter how much detail you put in, it just doesn't look like the character belongs in the scene. It looks like they're off. Maybe they feel like they're floating, right? It's like, mm. no matter how much detail you put in, it's not going to hide the fact if the underlying form is not good, right? If the, if the structure is not there, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna help. And so I always say, right, like in, in situations like this, your priority here is making sure that it feels like it's still in the scene, like it feels natural. Um, you said you quit because you didn't know how to sketch for fun. That relates to me a lot, still dealing with my hustle mindset and perfectionism. Yeah, I think when I was, I think, you know, whenever I tell my story about um, back when I was younger and stuff, one of the things that really stuck in my head, which I argue is maybe one of the reasons why I was struggling so much when I was younger to even do art, was that my dad would always ask me, hey, if you want to really be an artist, right, you have to tell me how you're going to make money. And that was always my mindset was thinking, okay, how am I going to make money? How am I going to make money? Um, and then that added so much pressure to me because I was more focused about that and actually less focused about actually enjoying the art and stuff. Just because I, you know, I wanted my parents to support my endeavor and, you know, you know, Asian parents, but also in general, parents are always like, ooh, art, starving, you know, starving artist. Yikes. I don't want my kid to be a starving artist. So I think personally, that was kind of what also made it difficult for me was I had this mindset that I had to be doing something that was either profitable, something that was really good. Every time I had to do something, it wasn't good because if I wasn't doing the right thing, then I was uh, wasting my time, right? And you know what they say, time is money and all of that stuff. And so this was something I struggled with a lot. I had to not draw for basically six years. I ended up doing software engineering. I became a, you know, I became a computer scientist, got a degree for that. And then after I realized that you know, even, even if you get a job that makes you good money, I don't know. I wasn't happy. I, I genuinely was not happy with my life. I was like, this sucks. I wanted to do art when I was younger. I wanted to do art when I was in high school. And, you know, here I am now, like not being happy with my life. And so I, I, you know, I decided to go back in and start doing art again. And I think I'd, I haven't regretted it yet. I think for me, this is still one of the best things I feel like I've done uh, for myself. So, uh, not to say that you guys should quit your job and stuff, you know, don't quit your job just because I say like, Hey, yeah, this is, this is what I did. And, and my life is so great. 
because you might quit your job, which might have security for you. And maybe you have kids or you got bills to pay. Right. And so I always tell people like, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt and, and, um, yeah. Um, um, yeah, exactly. Wow, this scene, this scene's actually looking pretty good. I was a little worried that we wouldn't be able to tackle this one since it seems so, uh, it seems so complex, but honestly, I, I feel like we, we did a pretty good job. I'm, <laughs> sometimes I, I give myself a pat on the back cause you know, I don't know. I never expect it to turn out good sometimes, especially for studies for studies. I don't, you know, I don't expect it to turn out good every time, but uh, in these distant days, design is on par with developers. Yeah, I think it's a lot different these days, for sure. Uh, the wearing parents will never get better, even if it comes to, especially with the introduction of AI. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Yeah, I feel bad for the younger generation where they're trying to explain to their they're trying to explain to their parents. They're like, "Hey, um, I know I uh I want to be an artist and stuff. I want to make money." And they're like, "Bro, I just bought a I I got an app. I got Lenza. Come on, kid." Why don't you be a developer and make another app and make money that way? Don't be an artist. Programs make art now. Oof. Imagine hearing that. Damn. That's that's rough. Um, at what age did you start taking art seriously? Um, two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, after not drawing for basically six years, was when I decided to take art seriously. And it took me about two years to start actually making a living. Uh, from the art that I was doing and stuff. Uh, would you consider a Discord channel for reference uh, breakdown and suggestions? Reference breakdown and suggestion. A, a Discord channel? Are you saying you want me to make one? Or are you asking if there's like a server that I know of? I don't know a lot of servers, unfortunately. I know I know my server. <laughs> my server kind of has something like that. Um, but yeah. Uh, so between the age of 19 and 63, exactly. You guys know, <laughs> you guys know exactly what I was going to say. Uh, man, am I, am, you guys know me, huh? It's true though. Um, but let's see here. Honestly, I don't think the worrying parents. Yeah, we read that part. Oh yeah, but welcome in guys. Oh, by the way, really quick. I do run ads on my stream every hour. Uh, one's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. And so always appreciated. If you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub if you have it. Uh, but either way, thanks for the support. And I hope to see you after the ad break. All right, there you go. Uh, like a channel where we can post references for you to consider breaking down whenever you feel like it. Oh, okay. Hmm. I see what you're saying. That could be a fun, um, a fun channel. You know, I was thinking about doing more like draw overs and art critiques for you guys. Cause we did that last Saturday and it seemed like a lot of you guys enjoyed that. Would you guys want me to do stuff like that more? Let me know in the chat real quick. If you guys want me to do more like art critiques or where I roast your guys' art, or if I draw over your guys' stuff. Um, I was thinking about doing something like that where maybe, you know, you guys give me your art. You might be like, hey, k -Sam, um, I've been drawing this thing. Can you show me how you would draw it? You know, that kind of thing. I think that could be kind of fun. Let me know in the chat if that's something you'd be down for. Uh, very often I feel too lazy to sketch out poses like this, but you kind of inspired me to do it again. It gets so frustrating when the pose doesn't work in the later steps and the perspective like this also seems so overwhelming. Right. Yeah. Like again, right. If you, if you took a look at this thing and I was like, all right, guys, I want you to draw this. Right. But you can imagine I like maybe the, the younger me, the beginner artist me would have just been like, okay, let me, let me jump in on all the details here and, and figure this one out. And then, you know, it's not going to look good, but by going in at it step by step, you can really start to see where the structure and form are. Because again, I always tell you guys, if this step doesn't look good, it does not matter how much detail you put into your drawing. And you guys know what I'm talking about, right? You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You try, you put all the details and you're like, hmm, doesn't look good. Let me go render it some more. Let me go keep, let me go spend another eight hours on rendering it. And no matter how much you keep doing it, it still doesn't look good, right? And so I always tell you guys, it's more important, more valuable to understand the basic forms 
than it is to try to get all the details in. Because if this was the younger me, I probably would have been like, okay, let me go draw. Let me try to draw this head real quick, right? Let me, I'll show you guys what I would have done. If this was the, if this was the younger me, the, the beginner artist me, I would have went and be like, okay, let me go draw this hair. Okay, cool. Let me go draw this eyes. Right. And then here's a nose. Okay, cool, cool. And then by the time I'm going in here and I'm zooming in on this head and I'm working on the body and then I zoom out and all of a sudden it doesn't look right. And you're like, Hmm, the arm is too big and the torso is too small kind of thing. You get what I'm saying? And so it's more important, I think, to understand the basic, uh, the basic primitive stuff here. Yeah, there you go. So we got this one locked in. Pretty solid, actually. Um, you can have both. Yeah, Ali, Ali Vara. They're both virtual. <laughs> um, do you dedicate yourself completely to art or do you have another job? It is, it is difficult for me to practice with my long hours of work in university. Um, back then, so back then, I when I was still a software engineer, what I used to do was basically I would wake up early in the morning and I made it the first thing that I did in the morning was to draw. I made sure that no matter what, no matter what I did at the end of the day, the one thing I wanted to make sure that I got done was drawing, right? And so I drew for about two hours before work. And then I would go, you know, to my job and do studio or work at the company and do all of that stuff. Later, um, now I work, I work in a studio now. And so I, I draw basically both both at work and, and, and when I'm not at work, right? So I'm always drawing now. Um, in which case the answer to your question is nowadays, yes, I dedicate myself completely to art because it's what I do for a living. Um, but when I was first starting out, yeah, I only had a little bit of time to do it. If that makes any sense. I only had whatever time I had that I wasn't burnt out from, from doing my, my software engineering job. Um, how do you practice as a beginner artist? Ah, that's a great question. Um, I would say one of the best ways, and I know this sounds kind of silly, but one of the best ways to practice as a beginner artist is to honestly think about maybe one thing about the things that interest you the most with your art. And then from there, if you really want to practice and get better, um, one of the things you can do is start to study the people that you really enjoy. And it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be like a crazy study, like study the masters kind of thing. But like, let's say you're a fan of Legend of Korra, which I'm sure some of you guys are. Um, study, you know, start drawing some of the Legend of Korra characters. Do some fan art, that kind of stuff. Have fun with it, right? See what see what works well, see what doesn't. And then use those moments to be like, okay, you know what? I tried drawing the characters and I felt like maybe some of the, some of the stuff felt kind of stiff, right? Okay. Use that as a general guideline to be able to say like, okay, well, in that case, let me go practice some gestures, right? Let me go, let me go work on making sure my gestures feel good and everything feels a little bit more natural, organic. Um, and then you go back in, do some more fun stuff again. And I think that's the healthy way to do it. Is that the way that I did it? No, I think I did it the unhealthy way, which was I, I roasted myself for a very long time, told myself I was trash. Um, and then I had, uh, random moments of motivation where I'd be like, Ooh, I actually feel really motivated to draw today. I'm so good. And then I would spend months feeling not motivated and feeling like I was not good as an artist. Right. And then I would always be waiting for motivation. I was always waiting to, to find that spur of the moment to actually feel like I should draw. When in reality, um, part of that was because I was so focused on, on, uh, producing results that I kept waiting for the, for those moments where I would make good results. When in reality, it's, it's not about that, you know, just draw all the time, have fun with it, find that balance, right? Practice certain things and then go back in and then do, um, you know, do some studies and then go back in, do some more, um, you know, casual stuff. Hold on. I need to do, I want to, I want to do this one again from the beginning. Let's, let's, let's do this one right. So we're going to go in here. Let's kind of establish the, uh, the clavicle here like this. Okay. So we are always going to do the clavicle there. Uh, we're going to put the deltoids here. So for this one, I'm not going to talk about the anatomy as much. I'll just go over it really quick with you guys, uh, because we already did all the anatomy earlier uh, with this demo. So I'm just going to go in and just kind of draw this one out. Okay. So we'll just have more fun, more casual with this one. Uh, did you ever like draw in class? Because I do a lot and my teachers don't mind, but sometimes I draw on myself and my biology teacher hates it. 
You're asking if I've ever drawn in class? Yes, I've been. I mean, I used to doodle all the time back when I was in school. And, you know, some people don't like it. Some people do. That's whatever. You know, you do you. You do what makes you happy. Um, as long as you're not doing anything illegal or harming other people, I don't you know. Just do what you want to do. But, hey, you know, don't take my advice on it. Shout out to those who drew on the desk. Okay. <laughs> I definitely did that and I got in trouble for that. Like stuff like that. Like, yeah, you know, you want to, you want to be careful about that because that's borderline vandalism. But I did, I did draw on the, I did draw on desks. Okay. I was a bit problematic in that, in that way. Um, thank you for the follows. Hud, Hudinius, welcome in. How long did it take you to find your style? Ah, another great question, which I think is one that is unfortunately a common one that I think a lot of beginners, you know, um, wonder, which is like, when will you find your style, right? When will I find my style? How many years will it take? Do I, you know, do I just stumble at a, like a grocery store where I go to aisle six where they sell you different styles? Ooh, let me get my, uh, my anime style here. Let me get that, uh, that Naruto style. Let me get that, uh, that, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's sometimes I think a lot of beginners think like the style is just something you acquire, but uh, here, here's what I'll say. So this is going to sound cliche. So the first thing I'll say is everyone already has a style, right? But when you're a beginner, um, you, your style is unrefined. And so because of that, it can sometimes vary very greatly. Or it can vary greatly across different illustrations. You might have a day where you're drawing looks cohesive. And then you have another day, it looks like something else. And so you haven't yet pinpointed your exact style and you're still working on refining it. But everyone has a style. Everyone has a preference, right? Now, what I will say about all that is um, it takes time, right? But there are things you can do to really get a style. So, for example, in the animation industry, if you want to work on a show, like let's say Legend of Korra, something that you're going to have to do, which I'll show you guys right now, is you're going to have to study the style of the show. So for those of you who are like, hey, Sam, how do I get a style? There's a particular artist that I like, or there's a particular show or movie or games that I like. How do I get that style? How do I get the League of Legends style, the Legend of Korra style, whatever? This is what I want you guys to do, okay? Go on the internet, find the references, find the styles that you're looking for, and then from there, go in and study and break down these forms, right? Break down the proportions, break down the perspective, break down the details, and here are some crazy things you're going to see when you're actually studying the style of these things. Notice how artists are very intentional. There are going to be a lot of subtleties you don't, you don't notice, but watch this. If you study this character right here, you'll notice that the hairline actually lines up right here with the brows. It lines up right here, right? It lines up with the nose as well, and it lines up with that lower lip. So these are very subtle details that you can see, but there's actually more to it too than that. Look at how the hairline is here, right? See these, these, these points in the hairline? And watch what they line up to. End of the brows, end of the eyes, end of the top of the brow right there. And you see how artists, when they actually work on these things, you're gonna be like, oh, wait a minute, these are all intentional right? These are not, these are not random things. The artists are very much intentional with how they're choosing to line up things and how to draw certain things. And so for those of you who are looking for a style, all of that stuff, yes, take your time, practice and draw naturally. And over time, you will, you will develop a style that you are happy with, but there are also things you can do right now to really speed up that process if you're looking to achieve a style. Because again, this is something you have to do in animation, right? Like maybe one day I'm gonna be working on SpongeBob and so I have to study the SpongeBob style. But then the next year I might be working on Legend of Korra, which is not at all like the SpongeBob style. And so I need to go and study that instead. And so there are technically ways you can study a style, um, but when it comes to developing your own style, a lot of that comes from natural influences, things that you see in media, things that you see from other artists, and then your own personal preferences. Maybe you like drawing very anatomical things with all the details, or maybe you're more of a cartoon person and you like to have simplified form, right? You like to have simple gestures. And so I think it really all depends on what you want to go for. And, and, and style can change very greatly year to year. So there you go. That's what I'll say about that. Thank you for the follows, Houdinis and uh, Nasima. Uh, thank you for showing. This is awesome. Yeah. Again, it's um, it's a good question because I feel like a lot of beginners 
come and ask me and they say stuff like, oh yeah, how do I find my style, Kasem? You know, where do I go to find my style? What, what class do I have to pay for? What YouTube video do I have to watch to find my style? And the reality of it is, is that none of those things will help you find your style. The thing that'll, the thing that you will do to get your style is to just draw, draw and focus on the things you care about. And I think naturally that's going to be where you'll find, uh, your style. Whoa. Hey, thank you for the, uh, what the heck? Oh, thank you guys. Appreciate the, uh, the subs out here guys. Um, do you have any advice for drawing fur? Small, medium, large texture. The same way that I talk about, um, the same way that I talk about drawing hair with you guys. Um, here's an example. The same way that I talk about drawing hair, um, fur is the same, right? Fur is not that much different from, from, uh, from hair. And it all comes down to small, medium, large shapes and applying textures and also implying shapes and forms. Um, that's kind of the quick tip. If you guys want a full kind of demo and stuff, I would check out some of my recent YouTube videos where I go over drawing heads. And I think the same techniques that I use for drawing, um, the same techniques that I use for drawing hair, you can actually use that for drawing fur. Um, obviously there's going to be a few different things that you can do, but overall for the most part, that's, that's kind of what I'll say. Um, <laughs> will we see some furs in the boot camp? I, I don't know. Probably not. Uh, wow. So many, so many messages out here. Damn. Welcome in guys. Thank you for all the follows. Uh, appreciate that. Um, whoa. Thank you for the two gifted. Sheesh. Thank you for helping me hit the sub goal. Hey, all right, guys. If you didn't know on my streams, um, we actually have a sub goal and every time that sub goal is hit, not only do the subs help me out, but it actually also helps everybody out who is, uh, everybody who is watching here because I actually give out free art resources every time we hit that sub goal. So if you guys haven't been in the discord channel yet, let me give you guys another resource right here that you guys can download. Thank you again for everybody who subscribed and gifted subs today. I'm going to give you guys the head sheet right here because, um, uh, yeah, there you go. You guys can, uh, you guys can download that one. And this is a free to grab again until the end of my stream. So make sure you grab them while I'm still live guys. But these are free to grab right here. All right. Thank you again for, uh, for the gifted subs and everybody else who was subscribing today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the follows as well, everybody. Um, best answer I've ever heard was just, you don't, you end up with one or you create one. Yeah. Again, that's, I think that's just like a quick, the TLDR version of what I explained is just like you either, you either eventually have your own, which you kind of already do have one naturally, or you can choose to get one by studying someone else's style and also making it your own. Right. So there's so many different ways to go about it, but I would definitely say that's one of the, the, the ways to do it. Um, do you know, Sam does arts? I do actually, I know, him per I know him personally, we follow each other on Instagram. If you take a look, Sam Desarts doesn't follow a lot of people on Instagram, but look who he does follow. Your boy K Sam. <laughs> I'm actually proud of that, man. I had to I had to bother him. I was like, hey, dude, follow me. Why aren't you following me? You know, like a like a like an insecure, uh, like an insecure partner. Like, hey, um, maybe you should put me on your profile picture. <laughs> I was like, yo, Sam, uh, why don't you follow me on Instagram, huh? And he's like, Yeah, okay, I'll follow you. I don't, I had to bother him, <laughs> but now Sam is cool. He's a very nice guy. Uh, what advice would you give to beginners to lose the shame of showing their art? Um, don't show your art. That's the fastest tip I would give is, uh, don't show your art instead, make a, make a, grab a sketchbook where you don't show any of your work, right? Keep it to yourself, have fun with it. Um, and then if you, if you ever want to show something that you're really proud of, okay, post that on Instagram, whatever have you. But I always say like, as a beginner, one of the most dangerous things you can do is really, um, get caught into the social media trap of feeling like, oh, I have to, I have to post stuff and I have to get the likes and I get it. It's a good dopamine hit, right? It's nice. It's nice posting something and knowing that people like it, people see and they're like, wow, that's so cool. I totally get that. Um, 
But the problem with that oftentimes is that it leads to feeling like you're, you're doing stuff for other people as opposed to doing stuff for yourself and enjoying the process and then having other people see that later, right? Uh, I'm just, I don't even know what I'm, I don't even know what I'm drawing right now. <laughs> I'm just drawing a guy. Uh, we're just having fun here. Maybe I'll give him a beard. I do like beards. Someone earlier was asking about facial hair, so we can draw some facial hair. There you go. Um, case I often hear that I need to practice to improve, but what is the perfect practice to enhance fast and avoid wasting time? Ah, yes. Perfect practice. Okay. So here is actually the real secret sauce. Perfect practice is kind of a weird statement because it implies that there's something that's a right way to practice and there's a wrong way to practice. Instead of thinking about perfect practice, instead, what I would recommend is you guys do something which is called practice with intention. Okay. Because here's the, here's a statement here. Okay. If you practice with intention, it'll lead to perfection. Okay. You get what I'm saying? And so what does it mean to practice with intention? So oftentimes I see people say stuff like, Hey Sam, I really want to get good at drawing. Uh, I really want to get good at drawing faces, right? But here's what I see that people do. Instead of practicing, learning the structure of the face and all that stuff, people are like, I'm going to learn how to draw a face. So what do they do? They draw a smiley face every day. And then 30 days later, what do you think you're going to get good at? Are you going to get good at drawing faces or are you going to get good at drawing that perfect smiley face, right? Or maybe you're just like, I'm going to practice to get better, but well, you're kind of just ambiguously drawing. So I always say practice with intention, know what you want to do. So if you want to learn how to draw faces, observe in your work, maybe what you're struggling with. Maybe you're not good at uh, grasping the volume and grasping, making the characters feel realistic. Maybe you're struggling with some of the anatomy or you feel like your characters are a little bland. They're lacking some expression, right? Have those things in mind, be intentional about those things and then practice those things, right? But I think if you're just going to be like, all right, I'm going to draw because I want to get better. I think that's a good habit to build to just draw regularly. But if you really want to be efficient with your time and the things you're studying, uh, I definitely think spending that extra time to figure out what it is you want to work on and setting some time aside for that I think is really going to be uh, the most beneficial overall. But uh, yeah, that's um, that's kind of what I'll say about that. That's a that's a good question. I don't know what I'm drawing. <laughs> we're just having fun. Uh, I'm just taking the the details that we have on this face, and we're. Um, messing around with it. Um, but let's see here. Uh, thank you for the sub, Poggy. Appreciate that. And Shaney, thank you for the follows. Uh, Yumila, VTN EU. Um, let's see here. You're ignoring the fact that you're going to be so good at drawing smiley faces, though. True. All right. You could, you could be good at drawing the smiley faces, right? And which could be fine. Um, that's, that could, that could definitely be the goal that you strive for the smiley face, the best smiley face artist on the internet. That could be for sure. The, the, the goal there, the dream. Oh, thank you for the follows. Who, who am I? Who, who am, wait, who are you? <laughs> thank you. Great name. All right. Um, but I think, I think that's, um, I think that's kind of what I'll say about all of that stuff. Again, I hope that, uh, I hope that today's stream has been helpful to you guys overall. Um, I think we covered a lot of topics today, some of which was related to perspective, some of which was not related to perspective, but I think was still kind of relatable in general. Um,
life stuff, art, art related stuff. <laughs> so many different topics today. Thank you so much for the subs guys. Um, we talked about bot stuff too. We did, we did talk about some bot stuff. All right. Geralt of Rivia. You want me to do Geralt of Rivia? Does he have long hair? I always forget. He does, right? If we're going to do Geralt of Rivia, I need to change... Uh, let me change this. His eyes are too, uh, too big for Geralt of Rivia. Anyways, there you go. This is um, this is kind of uh, what we did today. We focused primarily on um, drawing scenes in perspective, which I think is really fun. Uh, we don't get to do this often on my stream because I think it's such a it's a, it's a more dense topic for sure. It's a more complicated topic. Um, yeah, we have this one right here. We got we got this one right here that we did earlier for some of these perspective poses. But all right, guys, do you do you do character designing? Um, and you do you have OCs, right? So yeah, for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome in. Um, my name is KSM. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective to character design, and I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Currently, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer. For for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, or you're just looking to hang out with my dog or some art stream here on the weekend, make sure to follow. If you're watching from YouTube, subscribe. And uh, thank you again for watching all of that cool stuff, guys.